Philadelphia has always been my home. Life was good until it happened. I'm friends with a cybernetic enhanced human-like frog created to save Earth. Nobody appreciated or understood him, but I did. We were good friends who enjoyed hanging out with a bucket from the chicken fry. Just me, Cyberfrog, and his very large brother, Salamandroid. Until the invasion hit. They rained from the sky. These space invader giant hornets attacked everyone. Killing more than could stay alive. And covered the earth with giant blood honey hives. They can't fly near trees, so we hid in the woods burning endless fires to keep them away wearing red so they can't see and kill us all the last time i saw cyber frog he told me he'd track me down but it's been decades and there's been no sign of him yet i can't shake the feeling he is not gone i believe he will return again we need Cyberfrog and his brother Salamandroid to return and fight off these invaders. To take back our wrecked planet so we can live without fear. If you see my friend Cyberfrog, tell him I need him. We need him to save the world.
stream here uh, so you guys can watch Fran. Uh, it is important that you guys keep t uh, in touch with her. Hi. Quiet. There's no sound. You're kidding me. Now there should be sound. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? Ah, hi. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. It's me, Ethan Van Skyver. 29 year veteran of the comic book industry. The world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Sopranos fan, trusted member of the media. And today is a day of uh, sketch cards. Let's get some sketch cards going. Um, I figure I got to do these anyway. I might as well do them in front of you. Uh, doing sketch cards and a live stream at the same, the same time is like killing. It's like killing two birds with one stone. And that's what we're all about around here. Killing. We're all about killing. Right, Fran? Yes. Me and Fran. How are you guys? Uh, yeah. Fran is kind of sleepy there, as you can see. She's just chilling. Keep an eye on her. She ate a dozen more crickets this uh, over the past couple of days. But they were little. Andrea went in to get crickets, and she's like, I'm going to get small. And I'm like, okay. So she got small. And she's like, these are just going to be a snack. These will be a snack. And surely they were. Um, you know, Fran's getting big. She's eating uh, larger and larger size bugs, which is exactly what we need her to do. All right. So the first card that we're doing today is we're going to do a nice Heather Swain portrait. That'll be fun. Uh, hi. So let me see who's there. Uh, Cyberfrog holiday card link needs to be fixed. Oh, we got a bunch of things to talk about first. Yeah. All right, look, um, it's not, for some reason, the, it doesn't work as a link. Paste it into the browser, DJ, said Rick. Just copy it, paste it into your browser, uh, and that should work. I don't know what it is with YouTube channel member nonsense. It's almost impossible to get a link going. Uh, but here's the news. Uh, holiday cards are coming today. Uh, they should be arriving on my doorstep any minute now. Let me see what you guys are saying over there. My gosh. It's probably chaos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you just go and you you paste it into your browser, you should be fine. Let me just see if everybody's figuring that out. Um, we need a working link, Holmes, says P. Callen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. They don't let you post links. The last time I did this, we had the same problem, and we just, you know, I kept doing it over and over again, but... Key it into your browser. It takes you right to the site. That's right. People are complaining. Let me see. Look. All right, look. I'm going to erase the part where it says link. This is the confusing part. I'm like, yeah, click the link. It, it's not letting me post a link. So you just have to paste it into your browser. Just paste. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of this. Just paste. Uh, it's the website. Channel member cards are impossible. I don't know why uh, it's like this. Just paste the website into your browser. Website address into your browser and drop your address in. Your mailing address. Let me be even more specific and clear. All right, that's good. Yeah, I don't know why it's like that. I don't know why it does that. What if I put a www in front of it? I wonder if that would work. Hold on. Let me let me do a little. Oh, Fran. Fran got a frog. I mean a cricket. Fran got a cricket just now. Yeah, Fran. A lot of action. A lot of action happening on the stream so far. All right, hold on. Fran is not messing around. All right, let me see. I guess there's still a few crickets in there that she didn't get yet. It's a hungry girl. If I post this in. Hmm. Hmm. 
Let's try that. All right, now let's try host. All right, is it going to work? It might work, but it might not because, you know, what it does is it cuts off. See, this is the thing. It cuts off half of the address every single time. Dot, dot, dot. I don't need it to say dot, dot, dot. All right, will you guys go check and see if it works? All right, let me know. Let me know how it does now. But we went through this a million times last time, and it was a real uh, drag. It's a real pain. It works. Now it works. Okay, good. But for how long? But for how long? Uh, all right. So um, we got that going on. That's good news. We got Fran Cam. Fran's, Fran is eating crickets. She's having a wonderful day. Uh, and uh, today is the last day of our campaign against Poland and the Ukraine. No, it isn't. It isn't about that. It's our black light posters. Uh, today's it. Today's the last day. Get over there and back this. Um, this is uh, great stuff here. We're making three black light posters that are going to look like this. Remember when we did this together? Ah, that looks so cool, man. I, I decided to uh, put mine back on again. Like I put the black light um, back out and I turned it on. And I just have my entire office, my workspace over there looking like this. It really is nice. It's very atmospheric. We've got uh, three new three new designs. I mean, uh, the Our Family, or the, no, Our Heroes design. Um, Kelsey's Amazing American Hopper design. And, of course, Rumble Base. So you can have, uh, want to take your pick, you can have it as a regular poster or a blacklight poster. Regular posters are $40. Or no, blacklight, why am I? Blacklight posters are $40. Regular posters are $20. Um, so you can choose that or get all of them. Get all three of one or the other, or all of them together, and this is great. I mean, I you know I shouldn't be surprised, but I mean these are the Chromium trading cards are outselling the posters right now. People really like to collect the cards. Cro six new Chromium trading cards. Um, if we do make a, a lot more money on this campaign, uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hold back probably a month before making the Chromium cards because I want to see if we can raise a little bit more money. Uh, and under that, uh, under those circumstances, I'm going to foil pack them. I'm going to put them in nice little foil packs uh, so they just look nice. Otherwise, I mean, we'll, I'll send them to you in penny packs like usual. But it'd be really nice to have a foil pack with artwork printed on it and everything. Uh, we'll see. I don't know how much that's going to cost to make. I'll, I'll investigate that, and then I'll know, like, what the stretch goal is to hit that. Um, but posters. Uh, posters, it looks like they're already paid for here. We did great. Uh, so um, more than paid for. So I'm going to go ahead, and uh, when this ends... Uh, I'm going to put the posters right into production. I am going to hold back a month on the trading cards. Let's just see if I can raise a little more money. If not, that's okay. I mean, the cards are the cards will still get made, but they'll be in penny packs. Boy, would I like to put them in foil. Anyway, you want to collect this stuff. Um, I think it's really, really great quality. Uh, and this is what it's all about, making fun stuff with uh, our IPs. Um, so the link's in the description. Uh, back it while you can. And thanks. Now let's get to work here, shall we? And I'll put up, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put up one of these Smilleresque banners. Uh, here we go. There you go. And that way I don't have to talk about it. It says that at the bottom. Hi. Um, would packaging cost as much as adding more cards, says Hyper Wizard? Um, yeah, I think it would. 
I think it would actually cost around the same amount. And I see what you're saying. You're probably like, let's make more cards. That's a thought. Um, but no, I want, I want foil packs. The whole thing is, is that, um, you know, when, when I do a, a set of cards, a series of cards, I need there to be nine of them. So they fit in a page. The first three, um, foil cards or, um, chromium cards are coming with rec planet. So here's another six and now you'll have nine and it'll fill one whole page in your album. So that'll be good. And if we do more cards, we'll do another set of nine. Uh, the other thing is I just announced on uh, Twitter the um, that we will be doing monthly, starting in January, we'll be doing monthly channel member cards again. I just need to think of a theme, like what should it be? Uh, it's going to be all new art, and these are going to be uh, ability cards. So uh, it's going to be a series of cards where each card is going to focus on one ability, one superpower or ability of the characters. Like I'm going to start with Cyber Frog and I'll make a series of like nine cards that are based on his powers. And then we'll move on to Salamandroid. And uh, then we'll move on to the villains, Chelsin, you know, other characters. Talk about what they can do. All new artwork, all new series of cards, um, exclusive for uh, YouTube channel members. Uh, so thanks for waiting. I appreciate that. YouTube channel members are getting the uh, holiday card this month. And next month we'll begin the abilities cards. Cards A1 through A9. I talked to Andrew about making the uh, second trading card binder. Cyberfrog Series 2. That would basically be uh, red extermination cards. And she grumbled. She went, what? Well, maybe that's what we do. I don't know. Make a second binder. She's like, son, you're a dreamer. I'm like, I know, but I'm not the only one. Uh, Chris Varchella says, thanks for the warts and all book, Ethan. I love it. Hey, Chris, thanks for um, purchasing one. They're on our eBay store now. Links are there. Yeah, I was uh, yelling at Anna Navarro from The View on Twitter. I love Twitter because it gives me the opportunity uh, to yell at celebrities who otherwise, and I know they can see what I'm saying because I've got an actual, it's not like a paid for blue check mark. It's a legitimate blue check mark uh, that means that I'm notable. I'm a notable figure on in politics or the arts or journalism. So I know she sees what I'm saying. And, and you know, uh, stupid. Like, somebody told her, like, uh, hey, lay off the Twinkies because she's looking fat. And she really is getting fat. And she was like upset about, you know, not being called fat. Like that's one thing she was more upset at being kind of relegated to like the lower middle classes. Like how dare you suggest that I would eat a hostess snack cake. And I mean, I know just looking at her, I know for a fact that she stuffs her face with hostess snack cakes. I know she does. Uh, she's a, basically she responded, uh, somebody said, lay off the Twinkies and, and she was like, Twinkies, please, Twinkies, please, bitch. I only eat faux gras. Is it faux gras? How do you even pronounce it? Duck, like goose liver, duck or goose liver and, uh, caviar, which is basically like you know, what poor people, it's basically like nouveau riche, like food. Like you would say, I only eat caviar. No, you don't only eat caviar. Nobody only eats caviar. It's retarded. 
I put fish eggs on a cracker, and that's the only thing I eat. And a fatty goose liver. That isn't true. So that was a lie. And, you know, I know for a fact, like, I look at her and I go, I know that you eat, like, ding-dongs and devil dogs. Uh, I know that that's what you do. A caffeinated wolf joined the channel. Thank you very much. Pig Riser says, let the frog out, you monster. Let me tell you something. She loves it in there. Um, Project Stone Poorly says, Medicar said last night uh, on Year of the Chud Roundup that he only has one month of streaming left in him, that he is losing his battle with cancer. Wow, what a loss, man. I'm, that's really horrible. I love Medicar. can never tell if he's being serious or not, but I guess he really is sick. Hmm. God bless him. He is uh he's he was the best thing on YouTube. All during Gamergate. I haven't watched one of his live streams in a while. But uh God bless him. I hope he's okay. And uh Plus his little family. Now here's the thing about Anna Navarro. Again, if you're going to be fat, and I, I'm not saying you shouldn't be fat. I mean, there's some people who say stop being fat. I don't say that. Like Eric July says, stop being fat. I don't know. Maybe. Who am I to judge? because I'm a specimen of perfect physical fitness doesn't mean everybody has to be. But uh, if you're going to be fat, be fat and happy. Uh, there's nothing worse than fat and angry. Fat and angry is the worst combination. Because I know that like when you're sitting there screaming about Trump, and you are morbidly obese, Trump isn't really the problem. You know, you're lashing out. But it ain't Trump. He's not the issue. Now, I am, uh, I would say, uh, the model to adhere to is Santa Claus. Santa Claus is fat, but so what? He brings cheer. He's always laughing. He's like, ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, children. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, you little. That's Santa Claus. That's my impression of Santa Claus. That's why they don't let me uh, dress like Santa Claus and deal with the kids at church. Kids get scared. Ho, ho, ho. But you want to stay cheerful if you're heavy because people like that. They don't like fat and angry. And you got Whoopi Goldberg, who's fat and angry. And then you've got Anna Navarro, fat and angry. They're leading women down the wrong path. These bored women who stay at home. Loma Giganti said, who hurt you, Ethan? Who hurt me? All of you. Every day. Every day. Uh, EBS, if you're here, who's doing the store Santa gig? Dude, I would love to do, I would love to do that. I could get into character. I could be Santa Claus. I know I could do it. And there's a one time I told this story about when I went to the mall in my Santa costume to get a picture with Santa and they threw me out. 
mall cops actually threw me out and told me I was ruining Christmas for everyone. A lady came over and said, you understand there are kids in line and they see Santa and then they see you. And uh, they're very confused. And you're going to have to go home. And I said, ma'am, I'm just in line to get my picture with Santa just like anyone else. And security said, come on, sir, let's go. You're ruining Christmas. Ruining Christmas. <laughs> I just wanted a picture of me as Santa sitting on Santa's lap. Crisis of infinite Santas. Sir, you're ruining Christmas. That's like the weirdest thing anybody's ever said to me. If like, there's got to be, uh, there aren't too many people who aren't like villains in Christmas movies who are told, sir, you're ruining Christmas. That's something that gets said to Homer Simpson. It actually got said to me. Uh, I do feel bad. I ruined Shane Davis's uh, campaign by not being there to support him in his time of need. Shane Davis is in Glorious Rex 2. The only campaign on Indiegogo, the only comic skate campaign. And Shane's a good friend. Like I consider him to be an important comic skater, a good pal. He's the only person who I did not close out. I closed out everybody's stream except for his or everybody's campaign except for his. I mean, if Shane is angry, I wouldn't blame him. He didn't say he was angry, but. If he was, I'd understand. I mean, that, that must have been pretty hard. And I do believe that if, you know, if it had been on my channel, we, I'm sure we would have raised three times as much, you know, as he did on his. I'm sure we would have. But uh, I, I just was unavailable. Unavailable to Shane. Makes me sad when I think about it. Phil H says, at least he isn't fat and angry. Nope. No, if you're going to be angry, you got to be skinny. Shane is skinny. Uh, you don't want to be like a uh, weird skinny. You don't want to be Kathy Griffin. And, you know, that kind of angry where you're chopping off people's heads like that's weird. But if Shane's angry, like it's OK, he's earned the right to be furious because he's lost all that weight. I mean, you know, you talk to Shane about what he's eating, I'd be mad, too. How did you lose that weight? You know, just eating tuna fish right out of a can. No carbs. I mean, no way. Uh, yesterday, I ate a bunch of apple strudel. It was great. I wouldn't be allowed to eat apple strudel. If I was working towards the privilege of being angry all the time, I never would have been able to eat apple strudel. It's just it wouldn't be in my diet. Oh, so good. It was almost as good as apple pie. And I did finally eat some pies. I ate zero pies this year except for the Thanksgiving pies. Uh, <clears throat> here's what I heard. I, I was, I was sneaking down the stairs. I was sneaking down these stairs to come to work yesterday down here. 
And here's what Andrea said to me. She said, where are you going with that pie? And I haven't heard anyone say that to me in a long time. I had a whole pie in my, well, not a whole pie, but the whole box of pie, you know, what was left of the apple pie. She says, where are you going with that pie? I said, downstairs. She said, why? What are you going to do with it? I'm like, I'm going to eat it with my bare hands. She said, well, why, why do you have to take it downstairs? I'm like, well, if it's up here, you're going to throw it away. I know you. You're going to put it right in the garbage. And she went, okay. So I did. I took the pie downstairs and uh, just ate it with my bare hands. But, I mean, it really is something else when uh, to hear, like, your wife say that to you. Like, where are you going with that pie? <laughs> <laughs> That pie didn't stand a chance. Me and that pie, where are we going? We're going to heaven. God, it was so good. I've been eating a lot of sweets because uh, they're in the house. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, let me see. Yeah, with my bare hands. Listen, <clears throat> caffeinated wolf, you got to pick a pie up like it's a slice of pizza and then just, you know what I mean? See my hand in the uh, frame cam? You got to pick it up like it's a slice of pizza and just eat it that way. It's fantastic. Uh, Joseph Fazio says, no, no. You eat the cat food and then huff the gasoline rag and the combo drowns out the sound of the cats in the alley. Pardon me. Uh, Jay Bama fan says, how loud is your sneaking? Well, they were sitting at the kitchen or the dining room table, the kitchen table. So they just saw me walking by. But you know what? Like I try to hide it in front of me. You grab the pie and then you hold it in front of you and then turn your back to them. It's very subtle, you know. Very calculated, very sneaky. But no, I, did, I got caught. Where are you going with that pie? Tries to sneak a five. <laughs> Me, I do. What's wrong with that? Wow, this is really lovely. How much um is this is this cool? Is this a cool Heather Swain card so far? Or no? It's not cool. Three hundred people watching approximately on a beautiful Thursday morning. Welcome to all of you. Uh, EVS is stealth mode can be heard three miles away, says J Bomb a fan. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's not easy to, you know, laugh all you want. It's not easy to sneak a pie. I'm not sure it should be either. All right, let's take a look at the campaign and see how we're doing. Cyberfrog Blacklight poster ends tonight at 3 a.m. Uh, and here it is. This is the campaign. And once again, oh, thanks. We picked up some more backers. Once again, let me just point out to you, this is what a black light poster looks like. Uh, it's going to be about 24 by 36 inches, give or take an inch, believe it or not. That's the weird thing about these. I'll know the exact measurements soon. But uh, this is uh, the Salamandroid blacklight poster that we made. Look at this. Here it is under your blacklight. You can get a blacklight anywhere. You can get one at Amazon.com. They're especially prevalent around Halloween. Everybody has these blacklights for sale. But you can get one from Amazon.com. Uh, and this is what it does. I mean, this is the overall effect of the room, the rumpus room. Do you put them in your rumpus room or your man cave? 
you know? Um, hold on a second here. Where do you put them? Yeah. Put them anywhere. But this is the effect. I mean, it really does look nice. Look at this. The idea of making velvety black fluorescent colored posters like the rock posters of the 1970s appealed to you as much as it did us. And we sold out of them immediately. Yeah, we, we made like a thousand of these and we sold out of every single one. And people still want them. People, you know, ask for salamandroid posters, but they're gone. I have one hanging on my wall right where you see it here. And that's it. That's all there is. That's why we're making more. Three new posters here. Cyberfrog Our Heroes. Look at how great this is going to look with the different colors. This is going to be beautiful. I mean, I picked these pieces especially because uh, I think they would work well as black light posters. Uh, so there's Our Heroes. American Hopper, which I think is the biggest selling poster right now. We've done great with this one. Everybody saw, like, everybody who's seen this piece has said, I want that as a t-shirt, I want that as a poster, whatever you can do. So we, we made a chromium wreck planet out of this. It has nothing to do with wreck planet. Cyberfrog is not on a motorcycle in wreck planet. Sorry, motorcycles don't really work right now, you know, in 2018. Uh, Vespus occupied Philadelphia. They just don't work. So uh, there's no motorcycle, but the piece is so cool that, you, you know, we just had to make it and uh, had to make a cover out of it. So this is going to be chromium. Also, it'll be a velvet flock fluorescent black light poster. It's going to blow your mind. And this, of course, Rumblebee with this these bright yellows here uh, and this whiteness of the um, light right behind Rumblebee. This is going to look amazing. This is going to blow your mind, too. You're going to smoke a ball, and you're going to look at Rumblebee all day. I know it. I know you. I know what you do. So these are the three choices that you have. Um, take your pick or get all three. And the other thing that we have is we have these fantastic Chromium trading cards. C1 through C3 are coming free with Rack Planet. If you ordered the first Rack Planet campaign, you're getting three Chromium cards already. Uh, but... <clears throat> when you have a when you have our trading card binder, each page has nine card slots on it. So we want to make our card sets in at least variables of uh, of nine. Uh, so that's what this is here. We've got a C4 through C9, beautiful chromium trading cards. One pack of them. Uh, we're going to try to get them packed in foil if we can, like some nice foil, um, nice foil pack. Uh, but if not, we'll just send them as is. They really are nice. You can get these cards uh, right here on this campaign. Art's ready to go. We're just uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how this campaign does by closeout tonight, and um, Indiegogo will pay out. We're gonna put the product uh, the posters right into production right now. As soon as we get paid, posters are in production. It says they're gonna ship in March, but they'll ship quicker than that. I don't know how long these are gonna take. Maybe six weeks to make. Uh, so we want to get them into production as soon as possible. Uh, and we're going to, we'll keep the campaign up and all that stuff. So, um, the important thing is raising as much money as we can, uh, for the chromium cards. I think the posters are already paid for at this point. Chromium cards will be great because we'll just put them in foil packs if we can. So back to campaign, the link is in the description and all of my other amazing campaigns, uh, electric blue cyberfrog variant action figures. This is a mystery and a wonder to everybody. People are like, how did you do this? Uh, we're magical. Rainbow the Brute uh, and Second Chance for Cyberfrog 2 Wreck Planet. Oh, I'll tell you. I will tell you. Uh, somebody asked me today, like, what is the update on Wreck Planet? Like, fulfillment. Driving me nuts. It's driving me crazy. I, I really just want these books. Um, but, um, let me see. Where did I write it? Oh, last message I got from the printer. This was on Tuesday, uh, the 29th. Quote, the project is in the bindery. Did you know there's something called a bindery? Well, there's a bindery. Everything's printed and then they got to, you know, bind. They got to bind the interiors, the innards to the sketch page, which is one different stock of paper. And then that to the chromium cover. And it's staples and glue. It's two different forms of binding. Staples will not hold it. So staples and glue. Project is in the bindery for the rest of the week. 
We will do quality control during pack out. I love words like pack out. That makes me happy. And expect to ship late next week, early the following week. Oh, you're killing me. Depending on how quality control goes. Uh, we'll be FedExing a few copies prior to full shipment. All right, get me those. Send me my send me my copies at least so that I can look at it. There's, I mean, you know, waiting for something like this is just killer. Especially when I spent so long producing this comic book. I went back and I was reading some messages, um, like private messages, um, during like last year between me and your boy Zach. And uh, I was sitting there saying to him, man, it's agony. This comic book producing anything is just creating something of value. I was showing him some pages uh, from Rock Planet, and he was just kind of basically saying, um, uh, he was saying, I don't like your post-apocalyptic stuff. I think Cyberfrog should be uh, in the sewers eating pizza. Which always uh, very endearing advice coming from Zach. But uh, yeah, like, you know, just listening to myself a year ago, like uh, the book, like the book is underway and there's no end in sight. There's just no end in sight. I, I you know, I'm buried under this story. Oh, producing, like creating so hard. Um, but uh, man, it's finished. And, uh, you know, now, now waiting for the actual finished product. A delay of just like a single day is very frustrating. You know, I want to get it out. And the other thing is I was telling my dad, it's like, I, I just want to see what everybody says about it. Everybody who's read it has said it's magical. But what about the haters? Can you imagine if like you produce something that even the haters had to just admit was great? Like, even that, like, I want to do a comic book that's so good that it melts the heart of people who just hate me. People who are just predisposed to hating me. People who are naturally going to hate everything that I do just for the sake of causing me trouble. Like, imagine doing a comic book that is so good that it, it just, it, it destroys all opposition. Like, it is undeniable. You cannot, what are you going to say? You, you cannot say anything except this is a work of art. This is a meaningful work of art. Uh, Ethan is the uh, comic book artist of our generation, the voice of our generation. Can you imagine producing a work like that? Hmm. I mean, it's possible. You know, it's got to be possible. Uh, Josh says they never will. They will cope and still bitch. <laughs> I know, but boy, I'd love to give, like, I'd love to just take a shot at that. Like, that to me is, like, the ultimate goal is to actually, you know, take your art and win someone over with it. Like, win over somebody who's predisposed to hating you. Can you imagine creating love with a comic book, with a work of art, with a work of fiction? Like, uh, it can't happen with SJWs. You know, I don't, I don't think they're capable of doing that, but I think normal people are capable of that. It's possible. SJWs are incapable of creating anything except for propaganda. So, like, they'll never win you over if you're not one of them. But can you win one of them over? Hmm. I want to do a comic book that's so fucking cool, that's so human, and I want to do it with a frog. I want to just like tell a story with a frog and a salamander, and I want to make it more human and relatable than anything that they could do with their diverse people of color and gays, uh, any of those characters that they shit out. God, that's a dream. Um, Blue Badger has criticism here. He says, I wish creators would focus on making their comics get comics. Merch is cool, but I'd rather creators put books out. Uh, that's the point of comics. Waiting years, like Shinobi Sasquatch, is not helping. 
Yeah, Blue Badger, it's tough because I I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, it is tough because, um, uh, first of all, merch is easy to do. It's just not even a problem. Merch is, merch is something that I put out uh, in order to keep my IP in people's minds. And it doesn't take any effort at all. It's not like I have to draw a t-shirt. That It's just we make a t-shirt out of art that already exists. Um, so there's that. Uh, merch is just a good way to keep your uh, character and your IP and uh, all of that. Keep the enthusiasm out there. Uh, also giving your uh, customers something cool to collect and buy while you were working on a comic book. And I mean, the uh, rec planet couldn't have gone faster. Right? It would have been, there are a couple of things that I think got in the way. Uh, warts and all fulfillment uh, definitely got in the way. That was a crazy campaign. But uh, yeah, rec planet, it wasn't like, I'm not drawing rec planet today. Is I'm drawing every single day. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working on that comic every day. And there are certain parts of it that didn't even occur to me. Like there are certain themes that, you know, pop up when you're working on a comic book like that, that you emphasize in the story and writing that you embed in what you're doing that don't come to you all at once. It just takes time for that kind of a thing to materialize. Like, what does this all mean? What is it for? It isn't just a normal comic book. There's something else to this. Um, you know, so, I mean, don't worry. It, it's not like merch is a distraction. It just isn't a distraction. We're always drawing. Always working on comics. And, um, I never live stream or anything like that when I could be drawing. I live stream when I'm done drawing for the day. When I just can't draw anymore. And that happens. You end up hitting a creative wall where it's just like, oh, I, like your brain turns to tapioca and it's time. And that's, by the way, I wait until my brain turns to tapioca to start talking to you guys. And that's the point where I feel like uh, time to hang out with Cecil and John, Shane, Rini, Anna, get drunk. And say some really profound things to you. Yeah, sorry. Let me see. This. Thank you, Blue Badger. And by the way, thank you for your support. Anybody who's buying Rec Planet, anybody who's supporting anything that I do, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Merch is important for brand building, says Caffeinated Wolf. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's kind of it. Merch is something that ke generates, wait, merch is something that keeps the IP relevant and at the forefront of people's minds. It also generates easy income for Ethan while books are in production. Uh, Joshua uh, THX 1138 goes three years. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to reconcile that, you know, it's just when you say three years, what the hell? It's a it's 73 pages plus another 20 page book called Salamandroid Death Sting, plus any number of other projects that I was also working in in the meantime, producing in the meantime. There have been quite a few covers, uh, you know, warts and all. Again, a massive project. People go, it's just the reprint. It wasn't just a reprint. I mean, it was really a big project. Assembling all that stuff, writing all of that stuff, putting it all together and then fulfilling it. That thing was a bear. I, I challenge you to do it yourself. Find out. F around and find out, as they say. Um, so, yeah, we've done so much in these three years. And at the same time, Rec Planet ballooned to 73 pages plus another, you know, a uh, 20 page book that's 93 pages plus a bunch of censored stuff that got cut out approximately a hundred pages and they're good. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say, you know, as time goes on, the book got finished in like June it just, and it took this long to like letter it and to get into production and all this stuff it just takes time. Uh, let me see. Cecil says, uh, do you still have fat face this morning? I know he said your face is extremely fat. Oh, Cecil's in the chat. Hello, Cecil. 
<sighs> I mean, look, if I had just cut the book off at 48 pages, you'd be saying it took you a year and a half to do this comic book, a year and a half. But I kept going. I probably did two issues worth of work, two Cyber Frog installments worth of work that I did on one book. And that is, uh, that was a mistake. But it isn't a mistake because it's perfect. It isn't a mistake. It's the right length. It's the right length for this piece of artwork. It really is. It's the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, I understand I could have made more money and I would have gotten it out quicker had I just cut it down. It needed to be this way. It needed to be longer. I wish it could have been 40 more pages. But no, this is the way it is. Uh, let me see here. How about some glow-in-the-dark covers in the future? Yes, Alamandroid Death Sting has glow-in-the-dark covers. So that's good. <laughs> You're welcome, <coughs> slow ass. You say that now. You say that now. Let me see. Uh, I will accept COVID delays. Did a major role there. That's important to consider. I don't think so. I, you know, honestly, I, I can't take COVID as an excuse because how would that how would that affect me? COVID would slow production of you know at the printers, but I don't think COVID really affected. In any substantial way, I don't think COVID uh, affected us. You know, it's over 70 years late. Henry Thurn says, uh, just set your due date for the next campaign for five years. I don't even want to put a date on there anymore. I really don't. Because it's just a guess. It's like, when do I want this to be done? Not when is it going to get done in the natural course of creative events. When is this book going to get done? I don't know. I'm not sure. I do it all by myself. I, you know, it's all me. You know, it's all me. I don't have like a team. I have Kyle coloring it. I have Eric lettering it, but that's all pro like, you know, Kyle's a little more than production, but it, it's all production work. It happens after the story and the artwork is finished. And that's where, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's the bottleneck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Reg Planet, the Chinese democracy of comics. Yet, yeah, you know, Chinese democracy, when it came out, first of all, I like the main song, but it's definitely like, like that, that uh, whole album. What does it have? 18 guitars? Like, it does feel overdone. It does feel like that was like something they were like, oh my gosh, I hope this is uh we have to create Sergeant Pepper. I mean, that wasn't the case with me. I, I don't, you know, I wasn't like this has to be, you know, the Dark Knight Returns of Comicsgate, you know. I don't think that was a reason to hold it up. It was just, uh, you'll see, you'll see. Um, yeah, don't, exactly. Don't even put a date on it. We know you're good for it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's going to be, uh, it has to be the only thing on my like slate. I can't be doing like some people, are, my, my, I think like two years ago, I was like, I'm going to do this and this and this, and then this, I'm going to get three books done in a year. No, I, I can't, I can't do that and run a business. It has to be the only thing on my slate. The only thing I'm doing is Rainbow the Brute. The only thing I'm doing is Cyber Frog 3. That's it. We'll get Cyber Frog 3 finished, and then we launch another book. It's as simple as that. Uh, excuses, excuses, la la. I don't have any excuses. Um, Blue Badger says, I got to say, I'm someone who isn't a big fan of Cyber Frog, and I recently purchased the classic and modern editions. The book is spectacular. Uh, I'm an old school EVS diehard Green Lantern fan. Cyberfrog is every bit as uh, dynamic and great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get you with Wreck Planet. I'm telling you, we're going to get you. We're going to get you right in the heart. Can't wait. Can't wait. And by the way, I'm not even afraid of Anna. I'm not afraid of Anna's review. 
I think even Anna's going to like this. I think Anna's one complaint will be, and then it ended. Where's more? Where's more of it? <laughs> and that's been what everybody has said so far. By the end of Wreck Planet, I'm going to leave you wanting revenge so bad. This is the blue balls of Wreck Planet. You are going to want revenge. So not on me. You're going to want revenge. That's what Bill Willingham said. You are going to be pissed. And it's only the start. It's going to get worse. Hmm. James Murphy says, Fearsome just needs an artist. Fearsome just needs an artist. Get that going while you draw the main Cyberfrog books. More titles drawn by others. Or even a Kelsey Cyberfrog 90s stories kind of thing. More side books. Hmm. Why are you killing Lily off, so son of Liberty Radio? Did you read it? Uh, as you grow all caps, uh, you'll have to perhaps get a production manager. So you continue being creative and Andrew can, can continue being the head of logistics. Well, yeah, like we need, we definitely, uh, it'd be great to get some more people in here. The problem is the people who want to work for us are fans. We love you guys, but you know, you can't really trust people that you meet from the internet. We're sure most of you are great. But, you know, some of you, we can't be sure. We've got all these people who volunteer to help us to come and, you know, work for us. But, uh, yeah, it's a, I, I don't know. It's a tricky proposition. We've learned to not to not be very trusting. We've learned to sort of be uh, worried about people. And I'm sure you know why. So uh, there's that. But we have to hire people who, you know, have no idea who we are. <laughs> we just want a job. And are good at customer service. The only thing I want to do is write and draw. That's all I want to do. I would like to uh, write and draw and then just do live streams at night. To sell my books. That would be the perfect scenario. Hire Leem, says Oni64. I'd love to hire Leem. Liam is actually good at what he does. What does he do, though? A little cleavage for Heather this time. Not much, though. She's a good girl. She's not, you know, she's not a whore. She's not a dirty whore. I'm going to put on that, like, creepy music. 
Let me see. What kind of shitty music can I play? Um. That's pretty good. Kelly Green says, um, what are you going to do with all these original art pages? Um, well, a lot of people bought them. You can still get an original art page from the Rec Planet campaign. There's a tier where you can reserve one. The ones that are left over, I think there'll probably be like 25 or 30 pages left over. We'll go on our eBay store. We will auction them. Your balance, I don't know how much it costs to ship trucks in India, but here's some postage money. Papaya's praise the fun and Heather's believe it. Oh, thanks, Angry Bailing. Next year, all our troubles will be mine. My Black Friday Cyberfrog trading card collection is now for delivery. I hate trading cards. Why did I buy that? What What did you buy? Did you buy the whole set? Louder music, please. Way too loud. Music too loud. It's too loud. Alright, hold on. This might be gay. I don't... I don't even know if I like it. Alright, I say. Turn it down more. Uh, Caution Time says, I'm not mad about the delay, but his complaint is fair. You didn't have to do warts and all as well as other campaigns. I know. Will you be more careful about the workload you take on in addition to red extermination? Caution time. Uh, here, here's the plan for like uh, next year. Next year is the collected edition of Unforgettable Tales. And that's going to happen fairly soon. Because we've got, we've got uh, I want to do the uh, a hardcover of Unforgettable Tales 1 through 3. That'll happen fairly soon. But once we do Red Extermination, it's the only thing on the docket. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. You learn a lesson about, you know, taking on too much stuff, you know, too much work. Because the work itself isn't, it's everything around the work that's a problem. And then trying to manage like a regular life with all of that stuff. Uh, it's not easy. So, you know, what we found is that we make the most money on comic books. So we make the most profit from an issue of Cyberfrog. So maybe we should just be doing issues of Cyberfrog. Um, you know, and that's the plan moving forward. So once we get to Red Extermination, it's really going to be the only thing I'm working on. And while we're working on Red Extermination, we will be selling Wreck Planet and all the Wreck Planet merch on our eBay store. Uh, for extraordinary price hikes. And that's going to be the plan. <laughs> Sabaton's Christmas truce. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. I will agree with you. Yeah, I like Sabaton.
see here. Uh, hey, uh, Ethan, can you acknowledge the tribal chief? What's that mean? Uh, I thought this whole time Frank Ham was someone away from camera. It's it's a frog. Yeah, that's Fran in there. It's Fran Cam. Uh, get yourself a hairy little mistress. Ew. Um, I forgot, but is the stories and unforgettable tales in the Warts and All book? Yeah, like the first two are, and the third one was was not, but the third one is represented in your um because you got the executive hardcover. It's in the Frog of Palooza book. You know, it's a complete story that was never printed before. So you have the black and white version of it. I had Kyle Ritter clean it up and color it. And that's Unforgettable Tales number three. And it is hard to find. We we sold out of that in every single way. Uh, so reprinting it is a good idea, but I, I'll just reprint it as a as a hardcover. Uh, wait, Cecil is killed in Wreck Planet? I could take or leave revenge, says Mr. Joker. Yeah, if Cecil was killed, I'm sure most people, not you, but most people would be outraged. And they would want revenge. Cecil's uh, cash grab. Sitting right over there. It is on its way. Cecil's waiting for uh, the books. But it is, it exists. It is in print. Very exciting. Heather Swain. That's not bad. Brandon Estevez says, back a set of regular posters and a card set. Also, I forgive you for missing my super chat to Billy on Kings. How can I get a copy? How can one get a copy of Cash Grab? I don't know if, I think Cash Grab is closed now, Brennan. I think eventually uh, it'll Cecil will find a way to uh, sell more copies of them. Uh, Cecil's here. He says, some say it's the best thing I ever wrote. Yeah, it really is good, Cecil. Good job. Mm -mm. 
All right, let's see. Who was this for? This was for Eric. All right. Done. Completed. Uh, it's done. How Jordan is done. Oh boy. Superboy Prime. Okay. You want me to color it? Should I give this some color? All right. Sometimes I hesitate to color. But maybe we'll do that. Before we do. Whoa, what's up with your ears? Before we do, let's take a look at our campaign here. This is what we are, are, are all here promoting on today. First of all, Electric Blue, Cyber Frog variant action figures. Uh, our Rainbow the Brute campaign here. Rainbow the Brute. This is the main one, though. Cyberfrog Black Light Posters. Uh, we're banging this out real quick. This is a very quick campaign. I only ran it for, I think, four days. I think it was actually three days. It uh, closes out tonight at 3 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Now's your uh, chance to reserve some Black Light Posters. These are the designs. That was the old one that we did. Look, look at the way it looks. That looks rad as hell. You can't even lie. But these two, these three right here are the ones that are available. Choose one of them. Choose all three of them. They're velvet flocked, fluorescent colored, uh, and they're gonna they're gonna go through a fluorescent process. The printer's gonna do that. Gonna break down the colors into just four colors, four fluorescent uh, fluorescent colors. That's why I tried to keep them as simple as possible. Like this is fairly easy. I think there are only like I can only really see three colors on this as it is, um, and then black. The black portions will be all velvet. American Hopper, this one looks very easy as well. This will be broken down into fluorescence, and this is going to be amazing looking. Our heroes. Uh, put these under a black light, and they're just going to look awesome. Uh, get high. Uh, and <laughs> Get high. And just enjoy yourself. Great cyber fraud collectibles. And the other thing on this campaign, there are just two things. We've got posters. We've got um, black light posters, regular posters. Okay, these are just regular posters with no black light on them. Uh, and then also Chromium trading cards. These six Chromium trading cards, uh, a pack of these cards here. Uh, you can back those and uh, I'll send them uh, your way. They're going to be beautiful Chromium trading cards. Cards C1 through C3 are already coming with the first Rec Planet campaign. They're free for everybody who backed Rec Planet in the first campaign. You're going to get cards one through three. So if you have those already coming, maybe you would consider also buying cards C4 uh, through C9 right here. A matching set, put them all on a page of nine cards, stick them in your beautiful Series 1 Cyberfrog Collector's album, uh, which is great. It came free with warts and all. We did great. Like, all the campaigns that I do were amazing. We're so generous. Like, like We make stuff with the money that you give us. A lot of people are like, you're just going to pocket that. We don't pocket anything. Like Basically, we take all of the money that you send and we turn it into things. And then we sell, like we give you uh, what you backed. And then we sell everything on eBay. That's how we make our money. We sell what's left over on eBay for people who weren't here uh, to back the campaigns when they were running. Those people have to pay a lot more than you do. And that, but the stuff that you get for free, they have to pay for. Look like at trading card binders, like twenty dollars. If you backed warts and all, you got one for free. Same thing here. Um, same thing with everything that we do. Uh, this the uh, second chance Cyberfrog Two Rock Planet campaign. If you didn't back this yet. Holy cow, what are you waiting for? Uh, this is going to begin fulfillment very, very soon. Um, this is what everybody gets this time. I mean, if you back this campaign, look at the way the book looks. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Look at the way Rock Planet looks. People are going to cry. You're either going to cry with like for joy, like, I, I'm so glad I was a part of this. I made this. Or if you're a hater. You're going to cry salty tears, like bitter tears. Oh, this book took three three years to make. Yes, it did. It's worth it. Everything that comes with this book, every aspect of this book is worth it. It's worth all like your investment, your time, everything that I put into it. It's worth it. 
amazing, amazing comic book. Uh, this is what comes free. If you back this campaign, look at the Chromium covers being made here. This is how the process. It's just, everything takes longer when you're making quality stuff. It's just reality. We don't just like, I mean, I hate to say it, but most of the books that are coming out of crowdfunds, they all look the same. You know, the same quality, same type of binding, same, it's just the same. You're going to, when you open our, our um, mailer to you, you are going to gasp with happiness. Uh, this campaign here comes with this free book. If you back Cyberfrog Rock Planet, you're going to receive this extra comic book, Cyberfrog 2 Deleted Scenes, um, with this beautiful Rumblebee cover here. Wreck Planet Deleted Scenes. Exclusive extended scenes, blind alleys, and additional context. Uh, all stuff that was cut from Wreck Planet. Uh, and uh, you'll you'll get to uh, read that there. That's exclusive to this book. You'll never be able to see this anywhere else. You get it for free if you back Wreck Planet. Um, yeah. Heartsick Horror is also available. This beautiful $10 comic book. This is already in print in our warehouse. We need to go. First Wreck Planet campaigners. Uh, you back that first campaign. You're getting this for free with your order along with a copy of Salamandroid Color Zine. Um, a beautiful keychain. We made those keychains a while ago. Hold on a second. say yeah like with your order uh of wreck planet you will also be receiving a little bit this beautiful pvc set here this little pvc figure in a nice package and your keychain <laughs> little cyber frog keychain isn't it amazing You'll be getting your beautiful Chromium Wreck Planet. You'll be receiving Hearts of Car. You'll be receiving Salamandroid Color Zine. Uh, all this stuff's already in print and ready to go. You'll be getting three Chromium trading cards, three regular trading cards, parts P16, R4, and R5. You'll be receiving two dazzling stickers and uh, this nice PVC toy uh, and a keychain for $25. You know, I mean, think about that. You invested $25. Yes, you let me hold on to it for a little while while I produced all this stuff. Thank you for that. But you're getting your money's worth. You are definitely getting your money's worth. And the story itself, 73 pages long. Originally supposed to be 48. 73 pages long. Uh, so, yeah. Really is good stuff. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Those of you who didn't give me hell, <laughs> even those of you who did give me hell, I don't care. Thank you. Thank you. I understand. I'm going to put Cyberfrog right next to Frank. I understand uh, the impatience for this. You know, we might have to do it again because we've got the Heather Swain PVC. I don't know when we do that. When do we release the Heather Swain PVC? Do we make that a part of Cyberfrog 3? I don't know. Anyway, back to Cyberfrog Blacklight posters. Always back Cyberfrog campaigns. Uh, we do great work. And even though it takes a while to, uh, to produce the work, our fulfillment is top notch. And uh, our product is uh, obviously to die for. Nobody can do what we do. Nobody is doing what we do. Even the biggest indie comic books are not doing what we do. We're all about producing great stuff. Competing with Marvel and DC means making things that are as desirable. I remember going to comic book stores and just wanting things. I haven't felt like that in a while. Like I go, to, go into a comic store and I'm like, yeah, maybe let me just see if this is any good. Like, I'll we'll take a chance on this. Um, I haven't really like when I was a kid, or you know, uh, even in the '90s. Like I would go into a comic store, and 
I wanted more things than I even had money for. Everything looked so good. Everybody was making such great looking product that, you know, uh, I just didn't have enough money for everything that I would have bought. And that's gone now. I mean, I, you know, I just don't want any of this stuff. I'll read it, I guess. But uh, most of the stuff in comic book stores, uh, I, I just uh, couldn't couldn't be less interested in. It looks like garbage. Looks like trash. I read it and I just like hope that I'm not like repulsed by it. I think we make things that are desirable. One of the key things uh, to making a comic book. Uh, in one of these uh, crowdfunded campaigns, in my opinion, is to make something that people actually want, just based on how it looks, without even opening it. I want that. That's what I want to do. Sheila's like, I'm going to leave a few copies of Cash Grab in libraries. Sheila, that would be amazing if you did that. That'd be great. Yeah, we just got to get our comics out there. 2023 might be the year. Might be the year that we go, that I go direct market. I'm going to do it eventually because I want... So I, one of the things that SJWs always say is yeah, but your books aren't in stores. Like that's hard. That isn't hard. We could do that. I, I'd have to do like a cheap version of Cyberfog. I'd break down the the two books I have, Wreck Planet and Blood Honey, and then like actually like four books. I'd break them down uh, into twenty page chunks. Create new comic book covers for them and put them out into stores for five dollars. Five dollar price. Twenty pages for five dollars with a cheap cover. And just get it out there. But it isn't hard, you know, it's just a matter of is this the way I wanna, you know, get my books out there? Is this the way? No, I mean, it's not really I like the idea of kind of being isolated from the mainstream. But what about reaching more people who aren't on YouTube? What about finding more fans? Spreading the gospel of Cyberfrog far and wide. I mean, that is uh, also, that would be great. That is something that we should be doing. So I love Sheila putting that thing, putting a cash grab all over the place. Put it in libraries. Put it where people can find it. Cecil is lucky to have a fan like Sheila. 
I think he knows that, though. I wish I could call her. I am no Kyle Rudder, that's for sure. But I do my best. Oh, we've got 375 people watching right now. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Please hit the like button. Uh, I always forget to ask for that, but I need to ask you to, to smash that like button. Thumbs up. I mean, if you like this. If you don't like it, then you don't have to.
Um, Angry Bailing says, yo, E, you doing a normal stream later? I hope so. Um, yeah, I'd like to close out the Blacklight posters tonight. Uh, we're going to go to, uh, drive through a lights display. It was a, a family Christmas tradition. So we're going to be doing that this evening and, uh, I should be home around 8 PM and I'll, I'll begin streaming. I'll, I'll, I'll stream as long as I can, you know, uh, to close out the campaign. But uh, thanks for hanging out here now. Appreciate that. I know you're overseas. And I know that without a doubt, Angry Bandling, you already backed the campaign. Thank you very much. We see the same names over and over again. And it's like, it really is like humbling. And we recognize a lot of you. And we've, you know, we're just like, oh, you know, Angry Bandling supported us again and purchased um, this or that. Uh, we know you guys are loyal and we're, we're appreciative. Thank you. Very humbling. Survive Infinity says, Acknowledge me, A L O L. Uh, you are acknowledged. Hello there. Welcome to the show, such as it is. Yeah, I do okay with these drawing streams. You got to admit, like almost 400 people watching. That's not so bad. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Ms. Bama has seized my credit cards because of you, says J. Bama fan. Ah, <laughs> no, that's funny. Uh, Christopher Johns here. He says, uh, good morning, Ethan. I'm rallying some prayers for Per Burke. He's in the hospital getting an array of tests on. What? Narwhal is sick. I didn't hear that. Oh, prayers for uh, Narwhal. I hope he's okay. Hell, Narwhal. Paper Wizard says, do you think you do a fan art contest for Cyberfrog 3? Could do a series of fan art cards. That is a consideration right now, Hyper Wizard. Yeah, we're thinking about doing that. Oh, no. Jolly Green says, how did you get connected with Ritter? Kyle Ritter has been kind of a fan since... Uh, he was like a, like a fan way back when I was at DC, like 2010. Um, and he used to come by and he was like, I want to color your Green Lantern stuff. And DC, I couldn't control that. Like DC hired their own colorist. But when he, uh, he would like pull my black and white uh, line art pages and he would just color them and send them over. Like he was really auditioning all the time. 
Uh, eventually, I started paying him to color commissions that I would turn into prints uh, for conventions, and he was just awesome. But nothing compared to how he is now. So um, that's how I knew Kyle. I, I think he came to see me one one Megacon. He came to meet me in Florida, uh, which was really cool. He was very persistent. And that's what you got to be. I mean, you know, if you want to break into comics, you got to be like persistent and dogged. Um, just a reminder, those of you who are channel members, YouTube channel members, um, please go to my community tab and find the the link uh, to sign up for the holiday card. We've printed 1,000 Christmas cards, all caps, comics, Christmas trading cards. We're going to do this every year. This is the 2022 holiday card. And uh, channel members get theirs first. I think I have like 500 or 600 channel members. So. Uh, you know, you guys get the, uh, you get the first one and just sign up for it. We put your address in there so that we can ship you your cards. Those are coming in today. So they're going to begin to go out. Um, deadline of, I think January 1st or December 31st or something like that. So make sure that you, uh, you do that. Take advantage of that. January, we're going to start doing a whole separate series of trading cards that are I'm going to call them ability cards. Brand new artwork featuring um, the superpowers of our characters, what they can do, their limitations uh, and uh, advantages. All new trading cards just for channel YouTube channel members. So uh, thank you. Those of you who have been channel members, you're going to get a new line of trading cards. What is this? EVS, the CG slums are dying. Oh no. What happened? What, what, what happened to the slums? Um, you didn't read my super chat, says Dr. Coffin Nails. Uh, do frogs and toads have ridges on their heads? Some of them do. Uh, the dorsal, dorsal ridges. Um, yeah, certain frogs do. All, almost all toads do. Um, you know. Why you? Why do you ask? Just for John, I got that one. Let me see. I missed Doctor Coffinell. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Uh, the fast, good, cheap triangle dictates that only two out of the three corners can be achieved. I'd rather have good and cheap than fast. Hmm. Yeah. I guess I'm with you on that. I just care about good. I didn't used to care that much. When I was at DC, I don't really care. But I, I didn't care as much for most projects. There were some projects that I was like, this has to be great. But, you know, since it's my own stuff, I really do care. I want it to be as good as it can be. And, you know, I don't care if anybody remembers my Green Lantern stuff at all, or The Flash, or Batman, anything that I did, I don't care. I do care about Cyberfrog. I want people to remember Cyberfrog. Eric Mevitz is uh, the only channel I'm actually a patron of. Oh, thanks, Eric. Yeah, we give away stuff, too. I mean, we have nice uh, benefits for our members. Thanks for being one. Uh, you guys can, everybody else can join anytime they want. Just hit that join button. And become a member of all um, of Comic Artist Pro Secrets. My Patreon members are getting puzzle cards, and uh, channel members will be receiving ability cards. It took me a while to come up with an idea for another for like a line of trading cards for YouTube. It's 
exclusively for YouTube. But I like ability cards. I think that's cool. You'll have stats. You know, what can Salamandroid do with brand new artwork on the front of him performing that feat?
Uh, Christopher John says, where can I buy an image of the thumbnail for this stream? That is fire. That is card number one for the channel members. That is the first Cyberfrog um, uh, abilities card right there that you're seeing. So um, join the channel if you're not already a member, and uh, you will receive one. I think you already are a member, though. I think that's what that means. Uh, John Mellon's favorite holiday is 9-11. Oh, that's awful. Why would that be his favorite holiday? Terrible. There we go, gang. All done. Amazing. Heather Swain. Beauteous. Um, all right, so this is the first card. Let's go over and just check out the campaign um, that we are running right now. It's called Cyberfrog Blacklight Posters. First time we did Cyberfrog Blacklight Posters, they were a big hit. Everybody loved them. It was a nice solemn Android poster. Uh, and uh, people were quite happy with it. Uh, this is what it ended up looking like. 
Uh, we've got three choices this time. Here we go. We've got Cyberfrog. We've got the uh, with Salamandroid. This is going to look like fire when it's uh, all velvety and uh, fluorescent. American Hopper by Kelsey Shannon. This is our most popular poster by far. Uh, and Rumblebee. Rumblebee will just burst out of your wall when this is hanging up bright white and yellows. This is going to look crazy under a black light. It's going to look ridiculous. And look at all the black areas here. This is all going to be velvet flocked. It's going to be amazing. It's going to feel good. It's going to look good. You're going to be very happy with it. Choose any one of these or choose all three. Uh, also, we do non, um, non black light versions of each poster, regular versions for half price. It's $20 for just a regular poster. If you don't want a black light, you can get a regular version of any of these. Also, we've got chromium trading cards. Wreck Planet, uh, which is a tremendous, amazing campaign, uh, comes with the first three Chromium cards, C1 through C3. Uh, we're offering C4 through C9 right here in a pack of six. Uh, you can get those cards here so that you'll have a full page of Chromium uh, trading cards. And uh, get as many as you want. Uh, you can add this on with your poster order if you'd like to and get a few sets. We're hoping that the you know we'll raise enough money so that we can actually put these cards in a foil pack. That's like a stretch goal. So I'm going to leave this campaign. Now, this closes tonight. Uh, this campaign closes tonight. I'm going to take the money. We have plenty of money to make the posters. We're going to send those off to get made. I'm going to leave this open for like a month to see if we can raise more money uh, in order to uh, make better trading cards, put them in foil packs. Uh, so this will be in demand. You'll be able to back this all through the month of December, which is the worst month. Worst month for crowdfunding, but it doesn't matter. We're doing it anyway. Um, thank you. Thanks for uh, everyone who's backed it so far. 233 of you. Very much appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, and of course, we we also have our action figure campaign that's live right now. Rainbow the Brute. Fairy tale satire for real men. Uh, and... Uh, this campaign right here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, is this cool? Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet. This is the biggest crowdfunded campaign of all time. Real talk, it just is. And Cyberfrog is one of the most recognizable brands in indie comics now. Whether they like it or not, you did that. We did that together. We made Cyberfrog one of the most recognizable brands. Everybody has heard of it. They either love it or they fear and hate it. It's because of you guys. I love that they hate the frog. They're just like, man, Cyber Frog comics. They don't like it. I don't know why. I think it Cyber Frog represents like the loss of their control over everything. It's so pathetic. Like it's the same thing as Elon Musk and Donald Trump. Like these are characters that um, represent the loss of complete and total domination and control by the left. If Cyber Frog is popular, if it does well. It happened without their help. It happened without their say-so. In fact, it happened in spite of them. And that drives them crazy. It's weird. I just want to make a frog comic. Leave me alone. Uh, but you guys you guys have ensured that it's successful every single time. Uh, we're cruising towards a quarter of a million dollars on the second chance campaign. We zipped right past Keanu Reeves' Berserker. This is now the biggest crowdfunded campaign of all time. Sure, there's Eric July. But as Eric has said, his book was not a crowdfund. This is a crowdfund. And so we are number one amazing by a technicality because Eric July is not a crowdfund. Other than that, you know, we are number one amazing. Thank you. Um, all of the links are in the um, the description. So you can back any one of these campaigns. Also, uh, I'm going to be doing more sketch cards here. I hope you're enjoying watching. If you'd like to order a sketch card, the instructions on how to do that are also uh, in the description. And um, oh, your Cyberfrog keychain. These are free with Rec Planet. You're going to be getting a Cyberfrog keychain if you back the original Rec Planet campaign. I think I made 13,000 of these or so. Nice rubbery keychains with the Cyberfrog logo on the back. These were not cheap to make. Nothing is cheap that we do. Uh, and this will just look great hanging from your keys. People will see this and go, oh my gosh. You know, you are anti-authoritarian, you're anti-woke. Oh, no. And you'll say, hell yes, of course I am. What sane person wouldn't be? Amazing. All right, so this is Heather Swain. Let's go ahead and do the next one, uh, which is Cyberfrog eating pie. Interesting. Interesting. 
All right, let me see here. I think my dad just came home. I can hear him walking around the stairs. All right, let's go. Cyberfrog eating pie? You're kidding me. Why would they ask me to do that with a Santa Claus hat on? Interesting. Well, I mean, I got to do what I'm told. Uh, people are ordering cards. They can ask me to draw whatever they want, you know. Just following orders. I'm only following orders. All right. Uh, is Holiday moving in, says Bean Maller? Um, no, he's staying until Monday. He's here because it's my grandmother's 90th birthday. And we're, there's a big family party this Saturday. So he came up. He's staying here, you know, uh, staying with me until then. And it's nice. He doesn't take up much space. He doesn't complain. He's a pretty good house guest. And he absolutely loves YouTube. He loves coming down here and making fun of me. <laughs> yeah. Brand cam. Now, there are some of you who are saying you should, if you loved Fran, you would release Fran. That is not true. This frog in captivity is going to do a lot better than she would outside. She's perfectly happy in there. Frogs, um, you know, they don't, it's not like they roam. They're not like deer that, you know, roam the, the, the plains or the woods, I should say. They, they like to just live in holes. Uh, and, Finding food is difficult, and also, they're bound to become prey and be eaten. Here, I'm not going to eat Fran. Fran's going to live a healthy life. I will feed Fran. Fran lives in a place that's bigger than a hole where she's not sharing or competing with anyone for uh, space. She's not going to get in fights with other frogs. She's going to be just fine, perfectly loved and safe here with me and you it's not like owning a wild tiger it's not like owning a zebra I know it seems like that um, uh, you can hear the disappointment when your dad says John Malin's name <laughs> when did my dad say John Malin's name uh, Antonio Cardenas says, uh, isn't your dad getting too old to be wandering around by himself? Hmm. Well, he's got his wife with him. Uh, your dad moved into Cecil's room? Yeah, that's where he's staying right now. Uh, Blue Badger says, I'm going to purchase a sketch card from EVS. EVS, frog and dirt worm, dirt worm dog kissing. Ha ha ha. I'm not going to draw that. <laughs> I'm not drawing me and dirt worm dog. Hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, let me see. If I can order a doctor, a thalidomide doc, I will buy a sketch card right now. All right, yeah, sure. I don't care what you order. I'll draw it. <laughs> thalidomide doctor octopus. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was doing my own disabled superheroes. Super villains. Diversity. Holiday is a uh, fellow 11th Army Cavalry. Is that what that is? What is ACR? Vet, tell him Alon's. Hmm. I wish you were down here. Isn't Fran a boy? Yes. No, Fran's a girl. Fran is a girl. And the reason why we know Fran is a girl is because she has a white throat. Uh, males have darker throats. And males talk all the time. They, they, they make noise because they're trying to attract females. So they bark. Females are quiet. Every now and then they'll kind of chirp a little bit, which is their way of claiming their territory. So I've actually heard Fran chirp uh, as her way of saying, this cage is mine. This tank is mine. No other frogs can come in here. And that was nice. That's the female frog behavior. Yeah. And I don't know why her name is Fran. We, we asked Ava to name the frog and Ava said Fran. And we went, huh, okay. So there's no real reason that we know of, but Ava said so. Eric Mavet says Armored Cavalry Regiment. Hmm. Okay. Let's ACR. A lot of people are getting their Patreon cards. So that's great news. We mailed them all out. So uh, everybody should have gotten their um, beautiful Graham Nolan trading card here. Beautiful joint of uh, Cyberfrog having eaten all of Graham Nolan's character. Puzzle piece on the back, Del Kion. Unlike some people, I have many Del Kion covers. I think I, I probably have more Del Kion covers than almost anyone except for maybe Mandy. Mandy has more Del Kion comic skate art. Beautiful uh, Grand Nolan piece there. This card should have gone out to everybody. And uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, if you're a Patreon patron, it should be there soon. I think the uh, internationals went out maybe a day later. We ran out of international stamps. I had to go buy some more. Uh, also, again, once again, YouTube channel members, go to the um, the community tab, find the hidden post that's only uh, for YouTube members, and um, give me your address. Let me just check and make sure that's still working. Sometimes it doesn't work. Let me say click on that. It's working for me. Okay, that's good. Comments? What are people saying? Um, when I heard a holiday card, I was expecting to see your dad on a trading card. Uh, Scotty Codomino. All right, a lot of people. <laughs> uh, okay. People want under Panther Claws. Yeah, Andrew and I decided we are going to do that, but it's too, uh, we don't have enough time to do it this year. We're going to do it for next year. So we'll do a whole bunch of under Panther Claws 
trading cards, a whole deck of them. Ragaboom. Okay. Good. All right, great. It's working. Can't wait. Those trading cards will be on my porch sometime today. And we'll get them the heck out of here to you guys. It's good that we're getting them on the 1st of December. So the Christmas cards will go out on time. I love the idea of Christmas cards every year. And, you know, everybody else will be able to get one by purchasing something from our eBay store. At, like, from now on, like, every eBay purchase will come uh, with a Christmas card until we're out of them. And that's the plan. We'll just throw them in with everybody's orders. Casey says, Sheila has 50K subs already. I know she does. Sheila was uh, doing conspiracy stuff. She was doing conspiracy content. I don't know if she still is. But yeah, she's big on YouTube. Heads up. Oh, looks like Thomas is going <laughs> to... Thomas ordered a Doc Ock sketch. That's funny. All right, cool. The lid of my Dr. Octopus. Well, I mean, you know, he is the answer to uh, wheelchair and crutches Spider-Man. Or Spider, they, them. Now we got to be a little bit more diverse. The diverse means you got to learn to... Um, not be such ableist. That is important. Spider they them.
Get some music going. Let's turn on Sirius. There we go. It is sad that George Michael died on Christmas. And he did end up donating his heart to science. Makes me sad. Stasman Clash says, will we see an under Pantaclaus sketch stream this year? Yes, you will. And maybe even today. I have an idea. Andrew and I did talk about it. And we did come up with some. Andrea actually came up with the idea of that one with Santa Claus in his underpants splayed out. Sliding down the slide towards uh, Hermie the Elf. That was a good idea.
Right, I'm back. Mm -hmm.
Well, Eric Wimberg says, morning, Eat. thanks for the card. See you soon. Oh, cool. Fix your audio, says Lama Giganti. Uh, I did. I turned the audio down. Uh, Christopher John, because otherwise we'll get, you know, we'll get struck. Thank you. A, you got me sketching along with you. Yes. All right. This is great. Um, Iodine says, that's the ho, ho, hoest looking frog I've ever <laughs> I've ever seen. He's a happy Christmas frog. Uh, John Platt says, uh, here's a suggestion for an under uh, Panta Claus picture. Draw him with his sleigh and reindeer parked on top of a house with Rudolph and company looking on his horror as in horror as he tries to squeeze into the chimney pot. Oh, that's an idea. He's got to be, you know what it is though? John Platt, the whole thing about it is his body horror. You know, it's like, um, He's got to be in his underpants and be horrifically overweight, and it's just terrible. You don't want to see a guy this fat in his underpants, and that's what under Panta Claus is. Hello, Father. How are you? You got canceled? Yeah. By who? You. What did I cancel you? I did? No oh, good. Finally, I understand why cancel culture might be a beneficial thing. Pig Riser says, does Cyberfrog exist on flat Earth? Come on down, Dad. Uh, and if so, could you explain the science behind that? Thank you for 10 pounds to ask me a question. I'm not sure I understand. Cyberfrog exists not on flat Earth. He exists on regular Earth. Um, the science behind flat Earth, I think we've seen it all. Look at this. Don't gate keep holiday. Holiday. Everybody's happy to, to hear from you here. Yeah. Well, you banned me. I didn't ban you. You banned me just because I brought up a small portion of your heritage. Well, I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I banned you. I just said, uh, Dad, it's okay if you don't come down today. Well, what do you call that? I don't think that's banning. I, I said, Dad, I don't. It's okay with me if you don't come down. And embarrassed me horribly on my live stream today. That's all I said. I didn't say you're not allowed to. I just said it's okay if you don't. <laughs> you know, like I'd be understanding if you found something better to do. That's all. Yeah. So. I can take a hint. Well, good. I was counting on that. Yeah. We're going to the lights tonight, though. We're going to go uh, drive through uh, beautiful lights display. Wonderful. Kids love it. Ava will stand up. Uh, and poke her head out the ceiling of the car. Uh, you know, that's what she does. You know what I was just doing? What? Looking at lots of pictures of you and your siblings when you were just little. Really? Where'd you get those? I got them from Uncle Ray. We uh, copied his entire uh, photo database last night. Oh, cool. Send them to me. I am. I don't have anything like we're that. I'm going to do that. Uh, Eric Medved says, holiday Alans to a black horse vet. <laughs> you know what that means, Alans? Uh, Alon. Alon. Yeah, let's go. And that's an army thing? Yeah. Mm. He's a black horse vet. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, 11th Armored Cav. We be moi. Mm. Now we were in the 14th first, and they changed it to the 11th. Okay. You've got a lot of fans here. They're happy to hear from you. Oh, they're great people. I'm reading their, uh, their chats right now. Ethan was a sheep herder. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to bring it up again because it, it makes him so upset. Yeah. To know that he might have a sanitary engineer in his background. Well, you know what? We read about him. We so did. Yeah, we did. We looked him up. There's a picture of him in the Smithsonian. Did you notice the resemblance with you? Yeah, I did. And did you realize that he was a marketing genius like you? Uh, yeah, he was. And wasn't he on my mom's side of the family? Uh, no, he was on my on my father's side. You're kidding me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Thomas Crapper. Yeah, there's a lot of resemblance, son. Mm-hmm. You be maybe more full of crapper than you realize. <laughs> Shame on you. 
God, I just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I terrible. wonder if it's possible for you to, to not do, go out of your way to humiliate me in front of 331 people who are watching right now. Oh, hello, every one of you. Very wonderful. <laughs> I wonder if that's a possibility. Great comments. Great comments. <clears throat> <laughs> this is why holiday was canceled. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> I knew what I was doing, and uh, then he came down, yeah, uncanceled himself, and that's when uh, we realized what a mistake we'd made. <laughs> uh, yes, he did. Yes, Jay Sue, absolutely. Hello, John Platt. What a great people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at pictures of you upstairs. <clears throat> like, from, how old was I? Like uh, zero. Oh, really? Yep. Pictures of you at your uh, grandmother and grandfather's in Mesa. Pictures of you in our very first apartment. Wow. I know. It goes way back. Why does Uncle Ray have those and you don't? I think they they uh, took pictures. They borrowed my 35 millimeter and were taking pictures, and I never saw them. Hmm. This is cool. Got them now. Great. Send them over. <laughs> yeah. You'll probably want to put some of them up online. Does it, probably none of them, but I, I would like to see them. You were a good-looking kid. I know what would happen. All that hair. Yeah. That blonde hair. Being held by my father. Got some of those. Pop, pop. Yep. Yep, I'm here, Dr. Coffin Nails. I am here. Uh, today we have Fran Cam, as you can see. So people can watch the frog. Uh, she's in there, you know, just sleeping. But she came out. She put on a good show for a little while. She jumped and ate a cricket right in front of everybody. It was terrific. Man, exciting. Yeah, that's a ribbon. Yeah, I got a little list of sketch cards to do. Um, so I'm knocking them out. Not too many. I got to. I, I got to draw. Um. A thalidomide Dr. Octopus next. Oh, these are orders? Um, yeah, but careful about careful about reading them, please. Oh, anything. You gotta remember you're on the internet. Whoa. I know sometimes I don't act with full discretion. Right. I learned to be more discreet in my old age. Yeah. I was thinking about doing a line of uh George and Georgie cards. You have that one over there. Mm hmm Feel free. I'll give you a whole box of blank cards. That would be fun. Day <laughs> <laughs> is made. You better believe it, Dr. Fucking Nails. You're the man. You are the man. You know it. Dr. Coffin Nails, those are cigarettes. When do we get to hear holidays prose? Look at that. Last time they were asking for my poetry. Now they want my prose. Maybe a reading from the book of the dad. That would be something, huh? I just don't see that. Uh, I don't think we have time for that in our programming. Yeah. 2022 or 2023. <laughs> we're all booked up. <laughs> I was willing. I was willing. Uh, that was never in question. I'm actually canceled. I really am. Mm -hmm. Blacklisted. <laughs> I'd buy a holiday card. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord Hinson. Look at, mm. guy. Look at that. I'll probably make a living. I want a card by Holiday Marnu. Look at that. The demand is increasing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Oh, that's great. 
All we want is a reading from the book of the dad. See that? I don't know how you can resist that, son. I really don't. Yeah, it's it's a tough. It's just another example of my stoic nature. I mean, I'm really <laughs> an extraordinary human being. Oh, you are, son. You're strong. Yep. Yep. Read from the golden plates. I don't have those. I wish I did. How about a reading from the Book of Mormon? I could do that, too. You want to go get the Book of Mormon and give a little reading from the Book of Mormon? That'll shut them up. <laughs> I don't want to shut them up. I want to make them happy. Oh. Son, you are gay. But we all knew that at birth. Why were they trolling? That's not nice. Who did that? Uh, says No. Uh... Ula Girl Global Defense Secret Alias. Book of the Dad, Ethan. We can smell cowardice. Mm. Holiday cards by holiday. They're great. We demand this. Why isn't this a thing? I agree. <laughs> yeah. I used to be people. I'm thinking about doing a line of t shirts here, man. Mm. With my pocket loafers. You know, they're actually Arizona pocket loafers for George and Georgie. Yeah. You put them right above the pocket or on the pocket. Yeah. You know they were so. At last, I am fully employed. I don't have time for all of this. <sighs> no propaganda, please. It would be propaganda. Uh, Ethan, it's a dad's job to embarrass their kids because they're mad bad. <laughs> Yeah, these guys all think I'm gay, Dad. What do you think? You think I'm a homosexual? No way. Not even close. No? No. Hmm. No. Nope. You never thought that? You never thought I was gay? No. Nope. No. Nope. Hmm. Heteronormative. That's what we say. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have probably drowned you. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's not nice. I know. I we, take it we, got, we have some. We have some gays in the chat. Oh, I love them all. Yeah, me too. A little too much. A little too much. A little too closely. Uh-oh. Have you not seen your son's wardrobe? <laughs> I, I couldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got racks over there. Racks of all this. Oh, Liberace stuff. Oh. Yeah, I don't really have much Liberace stuff. I wish I did. Oh, I'm going to wear that tonight. <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, Dad, yes, of course. I am an inspiration to my son. He just leapt up, and now he's running to his racks. Where is he? He's searching. Oh. Looking for the right... Oh, my God. Look at you. You look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> what do you think? I think you're ready for the boxing ring. You think so? Yeah. Great. Wear this to the lights tonight. Holy cow. The perfect uh, thing to wear. Now, this plugs into a battery. Oh, my gosh. As if you weren't glittering enough. Look at you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh man, I want to sing a Christmas carol now. This is perfect. I can wear this out. I've not, I mean, I've had this. Out. Joy to the world, Ethan has come. Let earth receive her king. Dang. They can't <laughs> see, so they don't know what I'm wearing. But that, I mean, this is. <laughs> Holy cow, where's the person, right? How'd it cost me? Oh my gosh. How many Chinese women it took to put all of those uh, little things on there? All of them. And they <laughs> a good use of their time. <laughs> this is great news. Well, I do inspire you, son. I don't get as much credit as I deserve. <laughs> see, now they're asking. They want to see it. No, no, no. No, you're not going to let them see it? Well, no, because I got the camera set up the... Yeah, 
Yes. <laughs> Making the world a better place That's every really single day. Holiday caroling, bringing the Christmas feels. Uh, you got to move your hand here because my elbow goes there when I'm drawing. I am doing God's work. He does look fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. He did. Yeah, you have to take my word for it because you didn't want to show you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, they've seen it before. I, I've worn it on a live stream or two before, but yeah. It'd be great for tonight. That Tommy Crapper never had something like that when he was down the manhole. <laughs> <laughs> That guy's name is on manholes, so to speak. Yeah. Like all over England. They've, you know, yeah. proper manhole. He died just like uh, 1910 or something like that. So mm -hmm. not that long ago. We're not talking about, you know, way back when. Right. Recent. Why do you say recent? 1910. That was a, that was a long time ago. I remember those days. Remember the days of the chamber pot before we had good old Tommy Crapper. You don't remember that at all. You were born in 1951. You don't have any memories of chamber pots. How about me balanced on the top of a 55-gallon drum? What about that? Back when I lived in the wilderness in New Mexico. Ah. Had an outbuilding. And, uh, yeah. Noah, are you hearing this? Take notes. <laughs> 55 gallon drop. Holiday 2. Probably uh, Book of the Dad Volume 3. He's got his ears open. He's going to make another movie. You watch out. No. No. Is he on here? Maybe. He hates him. No, he doesn't. Yes. What do my children do? Fifty-one. This is the Breaking Bad or Origin story. <laughs> well, we could tell a story or two, huh? But we're not. No, we're not going to do it. Why? Well, drug stories. I don't want to talk about it. Why? Because I'm in the witness protection program as it is. No. Uh. Um, yeah. We would, uh, now, I've told a story, Dad. Since you embarrass me, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, I was doing caricatures uh, at the Cherry Hill Mall. Right. And <clears throat> an old Italian man. You don't have to say anything about this. <laughs> an old Italian man flanked by about three younger, big Italian guys. Uh, he came up to me. He was, I mean, he, he was wearing a black trench coat and everything like, and a suit underneath. And he came up to me and he said, are you Ethan Van Skyber? Your name, Ethan? And I said, yes, sir. Would you like a caricature? <laughs> and he said, your father. And he said, your name, your father is. And I said, yeah, that's my dad. He said, I want to shake your hand. <laughs> he said, your father is a great man. Uh, Oh, and he said, look at me. He said, look at me. A great man. You tell him I said so. <laughs> I wonder who that was. I don't know. I don't I, know who that was. And I just looked at him like, what the? F I uh, kept enough of them out of jail and their families. And yeah. 200 watt studio says a uh, crapper died flush though. Loaded. <laughs> 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 yeah. That is so funny. Your father. Great I man. I did not pay him, Max OX. Did not. That was uh, unsolicited. Mm. But I'm glad to be acknowledged by the family. <laughs> Could have been a threat. You never know. No, no, no. No. Those guys love me. Really? Truly. Mm. There's one lawyer who uh, got a <clears throat> letter default judgment though against one of the guys, and uh, 
until I got an occasion called me and said, man, you got to help me. I'm in trouble. $60,000 default judgment against this guy. Hold on. You allowed to tell this story? Oh, uh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I got it. You know, it came to me because it was before Judge Vance Tiger. And I thought that I had some pull. Well, I had the facts on my side. Mm -hmm. So that helped. I didn't have any pull because of the family, but they thought, you know, Judge Van Skyver, let's find a lawyer whose name is Van Skyver. And now maybe we can. That would probably work. Yeah. But anyway, you know, but Judge Van Skyver, the first thing he did, I stood before him in the case. He said, I want everybody to know just because we have the same last name, it doesn't mean that I will be swayed. <laughs> did he say that, really? Yeah. That's funny. Speech, first of all. Anyway. Made my reputation right then and there. I was only a lawyer for maybe a year or so when that happened. Mm. Got that default judgment overturned. Saved that other lawyer's life, literally. Mm. That was something. Remember the time you punched that other attorney in the face right in front of that. the judge? He needed that. But I. Explain I, that story. What happened? I won't use any names. Of course not. No. But uh, it was a case between a father and a son. Actually, you want to stand over here near the microphone? You're kind of far away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Involving the liquidation of a printing. Uh, I represented the son. And the other lawyer represented the father and and we reached an agreement before trial. We settled the case. And on the day of trial, we came to court, ready to put the settlement on the record. And we got to court, went in to tell the judge, and the other attorneys told the judge that they had decided to pull the agreement. And uh, that's just not done. You don't do that. Once you reach an agreement between attorneys, you don't renege. And I was so mad. I did. What would you call somebody who reneged? What would you call somebody who reneged? What would that be like if you were going to make a noun out of that? Uh, you would call them a re. Don't. Never mind. Don't say it. Don't. I won't say it. I don't know okay. what you have in mind. I, you know. It sounds like the N word. Right. I would not go. Yeah. Don't there. do that. I don't go there. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I did whack him right there in the judge's chambers. I was so upset with the guy. What happened? Explain that. Describe that scenario. I hit him a couple of times in the head. You did? Yeah. And he was upset with me for that. He brought charges against me. What before Judge Myron Gottlieb. I hope he's still alive. Myron mm -hmm. was a great guy. He heard the story. He testified. And Myron said, Judge Gottlieb said, I don't use the lawyer's name. He said, if I was in Mr. Van Skyver's place, I would have done the same thing. Case dismissed. <laughs> true. True story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't do that. You don't come to court thinking you have a settlement. And here the other lawyers say, oh, we're pulling the settlement. No, you don't do that. Yeah. So right in front of so you were mad. Like, so that you wanted that you said, wait a second. He said, we're pulling the agreement. We're, we're not. And then you said, can, I, can we meet in the judge's quarters? Is that what happened? Yeah, we were in the judge's chamber. Oh, okay. And so uh, what happened there? Explain what he said. What did he say? What did who say? The other lawyer. The other lawyer said that, that, was the, that they were uh, going to... Um, um, I got to teach you to tell stories. Dad. Retract the agreement. Why? What was his reason? I don't know. I don't remember now. I have to look in my journal. Okay. It's all recorded, you know, the details. But uh, I lost my mind. Back then, I was a little more, you know, athletic. Mm -hmm. You look at me now, I'm frail, feeble. Right, I remember. Yeah, but back in the day, you don't put up with that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, so I whacked him a couple What do you mean times. whacked him? So what happened? So you said to him, what? When you said, we're retracting this deal, what did you say? I gave him a right, I gave him a left. So you hit him with you no, just No, I gave him a left first, son. I led with the left. I led with the left, gave him a left and a right. You hit him in the jaw? Yeah, right in the head. 
not in the head in the it, like in the head uh, the head means the back of the skull like where did you hit him like in on the cheek, on the cheek. okay yeah did you knock him down no knocked him back though yeah took him by surprise but that's what he deserved i feel bad about it now because the guy went down the plane crash oh really and burned like yeah all of our alive. enemies do He's still alive he may be still living i don't know really it was all written up in the reading digest. Hmm. What was written up? This plane crash? Yeah. Okay. yeah. He was like a playboy. Hmm. Was he younger than you or older than you? I think he was about the same age, you know. Red convertible, really handsome guy. Like, uh, what's that guy that starred in... Uh, the way we were. What, Robert Redford? Yeah, just like that. Exactly like that. Mm. That's a mess. Well, I'm sorry I did that now. I would be under more control now. I would have stared at the guy and I would have looked at the and I would have said, oh, God, this can't happen. I would have been more controlled. Back then, I was young. Uh, you know. Hmm. Beautiful artwork you're doing there, son. Thanks, bud. I like it. Yeah. Beautiful. Having some fun. Yeah, I, I don't recommend that kind of uh, response, you know, when I'm angry with somebody. I'm more uh, harmless nowadays. You know? Ever since I became a veg and soy boy. Yeah. Yeah. Super super van punched out Robert Redford. Sweet. <laughs> Had to do it. Yeah. I was younger then, you know, and I didn't I, I, I didn't have full control of, of myself. You were acting on behalf of your clients uh who were, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And they would have they would have been proud of you for doing they would have liked that. Uh, yeah. Probably I don't remember now. I remember this guy was a cop. This uh, the plaintiff, the father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a cop, and he <clears throat> he said he was having uh, emotional psychiatric problems as a result of what his son was doing. Well, I got his psychiatric records. <laughs> which he resisted, but there I got him. Mm -hmm. And in them, he was threatening to kill me. Wow. Yeah. And here he's a cop. He's got a gun. I go to the police chief and I say, look at this. This guy is threatening to kill me. He's got a gun. I want you to put him off the force and take away his weapon. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't do it. See, it's hard, man. White lives matter, Doug. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you got the police. That was a long time ago. <laughs> If you were a black guy, it would, they would have taken his, uh, yeah. they would have shipped him out of here. It was back then, you know. You could have uh, prevented that. A lot more sensitive nowadays, but somehow I got out of it alive. Amazing. I had protection from on high. Hmm. Oh. Parents don't punch mother. I don't think my dad punched anyone in court. Yeah, it's unusual. <laughs> I know, I know. It was. You it came was home wrong. and you told that story to me right away, like the day it happened. I was like, "What are you doing?" I can't, I can't defend it. Son. Teenager, I was, I was like, "What are you doing, you know, Dad?" I can't defend it. Oh, yeah. Wrong. I mean, it's a good story, though. So, uh, that's good. <laughs> Noah, did you get all that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Noah, Noah's just waiting to do comics about us, <laughs> about the family. Anything else. Nope. Is he on there? He could be. Oh, you know. no. Yeah, he's, he's written several comic scripts about things I told him, and so I've kind of moved back. You know, he wants all my grandfather's stories. So I'm not gonna play. I love my grandfather. Yeah. You don't want your grandfather in a movie? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he would do that, too. Yeah. Me in a movie. Yeah, only just begun. 
What are you gonna do? You have a talented son who is doing uh, autobiographical comics about us. You know, it's just the way it is. He gets the facts all wrong. He does. Well, in the Crane Manus story, he got right. He got that completely right. Mm. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Did you read his Joseph Smith book yet? I did. What would you think? I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Really? I hope nobody buys it. Just, I'm just in terms of it's, you know, not, you know, it, it denigrates Joseph Smith. Yeah. It, and it's, uh, it, it paints him on the basis of a lot of anti-Mormon literature, which is not accurate. Mm. It depicts Joseph and his father as swindlers. Yeah. Grifters. Grifters. At the, you know, and that's something I, not really Joseph. Mm. You know, I'm a, I revere him. Yeah, I know. I know you do. Breaking horses. Broke the carnival. Thomas, what's that about? Uh, hey, Noah, have you done a comic of Ethan breaking a horse's back like he broke that carnival ride? Oh, well, a couple of that's a mixture of a couple of stories. But you know, I've always said I've never been on a horse before, but my memory is faulty. And Sheila Aliens used uh, some sort of internet time machine to find a photograph that you know Hunter's mother posted on the internet. Of me on a horse. She, you know, I bought her three horses and she was always trying to get me up riding the horses. And I was like, I'm not getting up there. Well, she must have convinced me to just go sit on the horse. And uh, I, I think I was even heavier than I am now back then. So there's a picture of fat me on a horse. Uh, Sheila has it and they've memed the heck out of it. You know, it's very funny. Uh, so there's that. And then there's a combination of that and a recent story where we took Ava to Sesame Place. And, you know, you know, her parents, one of us had to go on a ride with her. You know, she can't go by herself. But Andrew did most of them, but I was uh, I was assigned to go on Elmo's Blast Off ride. And uh, because of my girth, uh, the, uh, yeah, the ride didn't exactly blast off. And I may have broken the ride while children waited in line in agony. And that is story that I told recently. But, you know. Wow. Well, Marcus, no, I never uh, had my kids serve summons. I had, a, I had a process server I used. Uh, that's a good idea. I, I would have uh, come back though, right? Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. never no. did that. Never even thought of that. Good idea though. Marcus, smart. You paid them. Wow. Isn't that paying your kids to serve a complaint and summons? That's dangerous, right? Could be. Depends. Depends on the kind of case. Wow. Look at these guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ethan claims another victim. I the same day. Uh, nah, that horse was fun. But yeah, like I, I, you know, I don't want to get on a horse because of what happened to Christopher Reeve. Oh, exactly. You know, I think about Christopher Reeve all day long. What a waste. You think he was happy about it? He was not happy with that horse. He, he's not a fan. Why I don't ski? Look at happened to Sonny Bono. Yeah. Right into a tree. Boom. Just snuffed his life right out. It's like that. Hmm. Gotta be careful. I'm so careful.
There's no chance a horse can jump with Ethan sitting on it. <laughs> These guys think I'm way fatter than I am. Dad. You're not as fat as you are. Thanks, Dad. My dad just totally... My dad busted a bunch of myths about me today. Not fat, not gay. All you guys... <laughs> Eat it. Beautiful story. Um, what can I tell you? I'm really gifted. I pay two ninety five. Well, it's two fifty. Right. Are you? Two dollars fifty cents. No, Dad, two hundred and fifty dollars. What? Can you imagine if this were two dollars and fifty cents? Two fifty. I would starve to death. Maybe that's the point. <laughs> Oh, that's really good art. Got to put Ava and Kaylee through school. Oh. Man, look at that. Nobody else would, you know, put that much detail into a trading card. That's amazing. They just do like an Alfred Hitchcock type drawing, you know, and like that guy on ISOM, whatever his name is. Now, wait a second. Oh, Come geez. on. Well, we don't. Oh, no, 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 no. I appreciate his. Uh, He's that's great. He's a profitability and all great. Of that. Hold on now. Great. Great. No, no, is... uh, uh, we don't. No. No. <laughs> we don't do that. No, no. I'm not going to. No, not. What's Thank his name? you. I'm, I'm not saying that. Do not denigrate other creators on this panel. Do not do that. It's a good way to get me in real trouble. You wouldn't do that, no. No, not unless... Uh, like that Tristan girl. Yeah, like I wouldn't do Like she would do that. I would not do that. Not unless they came after me first. If somebody comes after me, it's fair game. <laughs> well, until then... <laughs> I'm gritting my teeth. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled again here. Oh, uh, all kinds of trouble. Oh, I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Well, you can blame it on the old man. Well, I would, Dad, because it would literally be your fault. Yeah. Blame it on me. I'm old, you know. I'm pre-dementia. Mm. All that. Craziness. All right, thank you, Dad. I'm going to get these markers. We're going to color this up. Oh, Is that my send-off? I mean, maybe. I, I, yeah. yeah? Yeah? Hold on a second. Oh, holiday card isn't coming until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Holiday trading. Yep. That's what they want. Well, it's going to be delivered tomorrow. I thought it was coming today. They're flying out for holiday trading cards. No, it's a Christmas card. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, I love all your people here. They're wonderful, and I want them to be happy if I never get to talk to them again because I'm canceled. I want them to know that I love them and I think they're fabulous and wonderful. And they are. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I wish them all like a Merry Christmas and uh, whatever else there is to wish them. I wish them all the good. <laughs> Fran isn't breathing. Like, Fran just passed on there, like, you know, while we were talking. All you can see is Fran's, is that Fran's butt or Fran's nose? Who is Fran facing? I think Fran is facing the camera. Oh, you on top of the house there? Her, yeah. Her. Hmm. Oh, I see her. Fran, that's her name? Yeah, that's what Ava named her. Oh. You know they named your rabbit Harvey? They did? Yeah, where did they get that name? They named my rabbit Harvey? Harvey, the white rabbit. Oh, I mean, I know, you know, obviously we know the movie Harvey. <laughs> Angela says, don't go, Holiday. We love you, Holiday. See that? Mm -hmm. They care. I didn't say you had to go. I just wanted you to move because I, I got I had to get the markers out from. Don't cancel our holiday, Ethan. 
<laughs> well, I'm not. I mean, <laughs> only one for Christmas. Okay. See, I got some friends out there. You guys know how to treat an old man. Fifty-one. That's last century. I'm still last century. Back yeah, me too. Back with the chamber pots. I was born in 1974. Now imagine if it were 1874, and this were the year 1922. I would seem like, wow, you were born right after the Civil War. You are so accurate. For me, it would be like uh, you were born right after the Kennedy assassination, shortly after, right after Nixon was kicked out of office or he resigned. That's good. You know what I realized, and this is true of all babies that were born in September, because you want to figure out, you want to figure out when you were conceived. Like, what were the circumstances, maybe, of your conception? And most people don't want to think about that. I don't really want to think about you that. You were conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition. Wrong. New Year's. Because nine months, the ninth month, look at this. September 3rd is my birthday. Yeah. That would mean that roughly nine months earlier, the January 3rd, let's just say it was New Year's. New Year's Eve, probably, I was conceived. But you didn't read what a the book celebration! Of the dad, they would have told you that you were late. What, what does that mean? That means that your fingers are off a little. How late, though? A couple weeks, I think. Really? Oh, misery! Oh, good. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. All right. Christmas, then. It would have been Christmas. could have been. You think about that all the time. And then, you know, it's like people who were born in uh, March. That's 4th of July. Mostly, probably. You know, you got parents coming home, young parents saying, let's make our own fireworks. Th- and then... This is what you think about all the time? I wonder it? about it. Oh. I wonder about it. <clears throat> well, I happen to remember the exact day. <laughs> Oh. Absolutely, I do. Really? Yes. Yes, I do. All right. We don't have to talk about no, it. No, we shouldn't talk about that. Okay. Ever. You know, like never. Ever. Never. But your mother would remember, too. Hmm. Uh-uh. No question. All right. Why are you like this, Ethan? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Why are you like this? It's a good question. Yeah. So we're going to Grandmom's on Saturday, huh? Or are we going to the church for I, Grandma's I birthday? I think it's at the church. Yeah, we're going to celebrate her. She is terrific. I got pictures up there of her when she was younger. She was good looking. She's become much kinder in her old age. I told her last night that she has mellowed considerably. She was crazy when we were growing up. Oh, my gosh. Hey, and you knew her when she was even mellower. Man. She was something else. I had to live on the street pretty much. Mm. Nice. Nice But she's she's just become a, a kind... Kind lady. Yeah. Who just gives kisses and oh, it's very nice to Andrea. They want me to tell stories, you know, of when I was a kid and what she was like and all. No, no, no. You've told me. I know. I, I, I don't know what to tell. There's going to be a crowd there of like 125 people. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna get up and you're gonna you're gonna talk a little bit about. I'm on the agenda. Yeah, they I... want me to say stuff about her. And it's like, I'm already doing the eulogy. Yeah. Well, she's not dead yet. No, but, you know, pick somebody else to talk about her. Why do I have to do both the eulogy and this celebratory, you know, thing? Why? Well, why? I know why. Why? I know why. I'm not articulate. I'm not as eloquent as you are. 
Yes, you are. God. You are, and you know it. Like, that's one thing that you're really good at. You're not good at a lot of things. Most things you're not good at. Thank you. But you are a great speaker. You're a really good public speaker. You've always been that way. One of your real gifts is that you're, you know, able to convey complex ideas to people in an interesting way. No, you're able to convey boring ideas to people <laughs> in an interesting uh, way. And I think that's your real gift. Like most of what you talk about or want to talk about is really boring. Uh, but uh, you're actually, you know, uh, anybody else would suffer under, uh, you know, under the circumstances of having to explain uh, the what book of Moroni. But you like. You know, you kept us awake for the most part. You loved it back in the day. Yeah, loved it. Very proud of you. Seriously. Remember those days taking you to seminary? We'd stop on the way uh, to see Ottoman Bottom. Mm -hmm. Remember that? What is that? See Ottoman Bottom. Ottoman Bottom. What is that? You don't remember her? At the 7 Eleven or wherever it was, where we stopped to get some donuts or something on the way to. Uh, School? No, I don't remember that. You don't remember Autumn and Bottom? How could you forget that? Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah. That's unforgettable. No, evidently not. It was very good. You know, I was like, uh, I, I consider myself uh, like Moses in a lot of ways. I've rescued and, and delivered countless Jews. Uh, from evil, I have inflicted a plague of frogs uh, on uh, the evil Marvel Comics, DC Comics. There's no doubt about that. But I would, I would also consider myself somebody who would say, "Why, God, I can't speak? You know, like my, I, I'm not a good speaker. Don't, don't make me be this. Let your boy Zach do this. You know, like that's what I would say to God. You, on the other hand, you." You know, you're, you're able to talk, you're able to speak, you're able to enrapture uh, people with uh, your ideas. Yeah, my parents never wanted to put me in a basket and throw me in a lake. Mm. Mm. I don't know if that's true. They may have. I've helped the Jews. Slow speech. You said I'm slow speech. Slow right, speech. that's right. Send somebody else. That's right. That's me. I say, send your boy Zach. Is he on here? Not Zach. Yeah. Uh, he, well, I don't know. He's probably watching right now. Uh, uh, he has my deep respect. Holiday is your Aaron. Born 1776. Bane. Bane 1776. Yeah. Holiday is your Aaron. In Hebrew, that's pronounced Aharon. Look at their complaint about me. Bane Miller says Ethan, comparing himself to Moses. Just in terms of his heroism. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Like, not in any other way. Just in terms of his historical importance and his ability to uh, to save entire peoples. Other than that. <laughs> yeah, I was never put in a basket. No, we loved you, son. Yeah, mom said I was her favorite, by the way. I don't know if I still am. But she did say that in front of my brothers and sisters. She said, Ethan's my favorite. I can't believe she said that. You were cute running around the neighborhood with your Superman cape on. Mm. Little kid with toe head. Yeah, I'll never forget. The basket would sink. <laughs> How do you guys type Hebrew? What does it say? What did he write? Moshe. Let me see here. Can you see it? I have to get closer to it. To oh, Mashiach. I'll, hold on a second. I'll, I'll share it here. There we go. There, it's bigger now. Well, Mashiach is Messiah, but has... See, it's not unpointed. Hebrew. Is it frog? You think you wrote frog Messiah? It could have been. It could have been. Messiah of the frogs. Hmm. Oh, the Savior. Yeah. 
Moses to save it. That's what that says? No, it didn't say it was Mashiach. It didn't say Moshe. Yeah. You should be reading that. I don't understand why you can't. Well, it's unpointed Hebrew is a problem. And I just learned it to be pointed, you know, which means the vowels are there. So I know, you know, where the syllable is. Some of these guys on here, they know he, they read Hebrew without the vowel pointing. So they can read it with just a consonant. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's what I, that's what it says, right? Or no. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what he said. That's not what oh, Val said that. That's Frog in Hebrew? Wait. In 1776. Frog Messiah, yeah. Okay. All right. That's cool. Yeah, you're very fond of the Jews, Dad. Unlike uh, Kanye West, you really like the Jews. That's one thing about you. What is it that you like about Jews, Dad? Um, the Lord gave them as a light to the world. I just really enjoy their literature. I, I, I admire many of the, of the uh, biblical... Uh, Hebrews, many of them, mm -hmm. studied their language for many years. Um, Do you like that they whine and complain all the time? Uh, who doesn't? Everybody does. All yeah, but their whole culture is based on it, though. I mean, if you go to, like, uh, Seder, you know, it's all about complaining. I noticed that. I was like, why are you complaining about stuff that happened 8,000 years ago to, to not you? 8,000 years. How about 4,000 years? I mean, they're, you know, they're suffering. That's why you like them, I think. That's why you relate to them, because you relate to suffering. You admire suffering. And we all suffer, everybody, every race. It's not just the Jews, you know. It's not limited to them. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. We do. We're tested and tried. Yeah. But, I think, um, you know, the Lord's made amazing promises to the Jews, the Jewish people. They're scattered now for the most part. The Lord has promised in holy writ to gather them. Wouldn't that be ironic if you screwed him out of his promises? No, he won't do that. No. He will not do that. Yeah. Oh, look, at, look at Henry. Our Savior came from the Jews, actually. That's right. Yes. Smart. Yeah, that Henry is a very smart guy. I noticed that his comments are like, Shh, brilliant. Brilliant. A lot of the people in this chat are very smart. They are. Hmm. Yeah, you 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 actually gave me that. that. You you taught me to love the Jew. I love the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. so I married one. They're brilliant. It didn't turn out well. That's right. They're brilliant. Very gifted. The Lord. Has given them special gifts. How many mm -hmm. Nobel Prize winners have come you know, from the Jewish race? Are the Jews a race? Or are they a religion? They are? Yeah. Mm. That always confused me. I guess so. How many, uh, what did they win? What did they do? What, what, you know, like what? I don't know. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> Google it. My dad just hit me with a Google is your friend. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> They've won many, many Nobel Prizes, more than anyone. Yeah. Lots of medical stuff. And, uh, Lots of Academy physics. Awards. You know, you got Einstein. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous minds. They've just been a gift to mankind, but they've been uh, slandered. Yep. Uh, some deserve it, you know, but it's just like any other race. You've got people who deserve to be 
to be uh, put down. Yep. Like when people, you know what, when people of color talk about how awful white people are, uh, I go, wait a second. And then I think of John Malin and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> as soon as I think of John Malin, I, I agree with him. I'm like, oh yeah, some white people are terrible. It's terrible. Alex Stein. Yeah, I think he's Jewish. I love the way they take care of each other. Uh, I'd love to be part of a real tight knit community like that. Mm-hmm. Love to be. <laughs> like up in Brooklyn. John's friends. My friends. <laughs> Yeah, I think John got that for me. I think I'm the one who started doing my friends, my my dear friends. That's right. Karl Marx was a Jew. I don't think he uh, understood the religion, but he was a Jew. Hmm. What do you mean he didn't understand it? Well, you know, I think um, the Hebrews believed in liberty. And Marxism is about the subjugation of the individual in favor of the state. And that's, uh, I think Moses would have been very upset with him about that. Hmm. Oh, that's right. That's where it came from. Stan Lee, my fans, (laughs) line them up against a wall and give me a Tommy gun. That was the greatest thing. I met Stan Lee maybe four times in my life, but the first time I met him was the best time because he was angry. And uh, he's sitting there signing all these comics, Dad. He's sitting in a room, like, stacks of comics, and he's grumbling about it. He's like, these things are just going to go up on eBay as soon as I'm done signing them. I'm like, no, Stan. They're your fans. They're your precious fans. And Stan Lee said, my fans, line them up against the wall and give me a Tommy gun. (laughs) It's the greatest thing. I was like, Stan, the real Stan Lee. Good Jews and bad Jews. I think Stan was a Jew. Absolutely right. Stan would be a good Jew. Just like any other race. You had good ones and bad ones. Righteous people and unrighteous people. My fans. Stan Lee. What a guy he was. You're a big fan, right, Dad? You love Marvel Comics as a kid. Uh, some of it. I'm, You know, I... I like Superman, I like Batman a lot. I like uh, Sergeant Rock. Um, Conan. Conan the Barbarian, yes. That's your favorite. It was when, you know, what's his name? Barry Windsor Smith. I got to meet Barry Windsor Smith. He is everything you'd want him to be. Like, if you like Barry Windsor Smith, uh, Dad, and you want to admire him, like, he sets himself out to be... Like he, I don't think he is British, but he pretends to be British. Mm. He's got a big like beard and everything, and he he sits in a throne like, <laughs> at, you know, at conventions. Like he he really is a regal guy. He's like I'm like I was impressed to meet him. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed his artwork back in the '70s. You know, when he did those first 24 issues of Gun and the Barbarian, I I just couldn't wait for them to come. If I had to wait two years. For Conan, like you, your fans have to wait for Red Planet. What would you have done? I, I would have been. Don't give these people any ideas, Dad. I would have been ulcerous. I would have, I would have gone crazy. Ulcerous. On. I would have, I would have shot. Oh, that would have been horrible. But they came month after month on time. They were right down the PX. I could go down there and get it. I was in the army at the time, and I loved that. I loved his art. Hmm. I still have it. Yeah, I have the first hundred and nineteen issues or something of uh, Conan the Barbarian, but it's the first twenty four that were any were really good because he was the artist. First couple of years, man, Barry Windsor Smith. What a guy! What a guy! You're lucky you met him. I am. I really was privileged yeah. uh, to uh, to meet him. Someday maybe I can meet him. Yeah, well, he's so healthy. Uh, but I'm not sure he gets out very much I'm anymore. Celebrate Quasar, <laughs> casting shade. 
eggplant. I had that last night and the night before. Love eggplant. Got some in the refrigerator upstairs. Really? Yeah. My mother uh, sent me a dish of uh, eggplant parmesan. It's upstairs. You want some? No. She's good to you because uh, she knows you're vegetarian. That's got to annoy her on some level. But, you know, she uh, still cooks you vegetarian meals. Yeah. You know, she goes out of her way to make me special dishes. You have to say that. Tomorrow at her memorial, her you know, 90 year old, 90 year birthday. It's going to be great. What kind of food is going to be there? Not tomorrow. Well, it's Saturday. Well, it's you know, here she is blind and she's working on that meat slicer again. Oh, boy. So you're going to have. I don't know whether it's hot roast beef sandwiches or what, but uh, she sliced up lots of uh, beef. Mm -hmm. She's going to have ham, potato salad, her famous potato salad. Um, I don't know. I heard her talking about she's already working on everything. I just don't like her working around that meat slicer when she's blind. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, she won't let anybody else do it. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who was blind at BYU, and we spent a lot of time together walking. I remember walking once to the Wilkinson Center, and he went down the stairs like it was unbelievable how quickly he went down those stairs. And I'm going, how would you do that? You're blind. He said, I could do it blindfolded. Mm. Yeah, that's what he said. I guess that's kind of a joke. Well, he said it. Oh, that's real? He actually did say that? He actually said that to me. I laughed like crazy. Mm. Great sense of humor. Yeah. Wine meat slicer. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Grandma is a good cook. And um, that one day I'm going to be giving your eulogy. You know what I mean? Like, it's probably going to fall to me. Uh, maybe I should write it for you. Maybe Noah should do it. Maybe we'll get Noah to uh, uh, deliver your eulogy. You could just quote from the Book of the Dad. Mm. Which you refuse to read. Oh. I read Blood Honey. Yeah, but that's fun, though. You don't think my book of the dad is fun? I don't know. I haven't read it. No, you wouldn't know. Yeah, it's hilarious. I put my heart into it for you. I said, No, you, you put your heart into it for Jenna. I had you in mind whole thing with her like i want to get everybody to do stuff no how about the rise of the lizard wizards i wrote that chapter the rise of the lizard wizards aren't you curious about that chapter you were there you were part of all of that you were a co-founder of the lizard wizards back in the day i don't know what that is you forgot you have repressed a lot of your memories i don't oh. know why Lizard uh, wizards. We need to send you to the psychiatrist. Find out what's going on with you that you're suppressing all these yeah. important details of your background. All right. Why? So, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I, I mean, now I'm curious. Now, look what you did. Lizard wizards. I'm in. It says cases. Cases. Oh, lizard wizards. That's you. That's us going fossil hunting. That's it. Yeah, but dinosaurs aren't lizards, Dad. And the ones that we were searching for certainly weren't uh, well, reptiles. I mean, they're sharks. Mostly sharks. Well, you know, the Hadrosaurus was found in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Yeah, I was talking about that uh, yesterday. So, you know, you never know what you're going to find. I found that vertebrae from a Pleosaurus. Are you sure? I'm positive. I got it identified. Really? Yeah. I still kept all of my fossil teeth and uh, the crinoids and all of that stuff. Belemnitellas. Remember the Belemnites? Yeah. Yeah. I got all that stuff. Hmm. I don't know who to give them to. I guess I'll just throw them away. Put them back in the dirt. All Confused the, uh, people. the sharp teeth that I found... Um, Lizard wizard equals cyberfrog villain, says Styles 1 Clash. Thank New you. New Mexico. 
Can you imagine the ocean extending into New Mexico? And I have proof. I've got shark teeth. I got bony fish teeth and uh, all kind of stuff. That's beautiful. Are you going to consider that done? Uh, almost, yeah. Will he ever have pupils? I don't think so. I mean, not unless there's some weird cartoon. I mean, look at the turtles. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were given pupils, you know, when they got on TV. But, uh, yeah, somebody will probably cutesy up Cyber Frog if he ever gets a cartoon show. This frog is not really exciting. Well, I mean, that's what's great about frogs. Should I uh, kind of touch him and move him around a little bit? No. Frogs sleep, like, uh, 98% of the time. Well, he shouldn't sleep when he's on camera, though. We want a show. You already gave him a show. He ate a cricket. It was fantastic. She ate a cricket. I don't know. What am I doing? Poor Jiminy Cricket. She did a great job for everyone. And then she went nap time. So, frogs aren't vegetarians? No, not at all. They can't. They, they couldn't do that because frogs eat based on their movement like frogs they don't really see very well what they do is they see a cricket or something a fly moving around and they that's when they jump for it i'm gonna like wave some grass in front of his face alfalfa or something would he go for it yeah maybe i guess he was really moves, hungry right yeah he was really hungry he would hmm. frogs will bite your finger because of that comment Man, that Hebrew word for frogs. I'm going to have to look that up. That's important. Look at that. There's an awful lot of letters there. All the way home, I'll be warm. Uh, oh, man, got some uh, stuff here. Let's take a look. Something went wrong. All right. Okay, let's see. Get your files. Download. What is all this? Oh, we're about to look at some uh, packaging for the uh, toys. The action figures. Are you off of the air now? No, I'm still on the air. They're hearing you. They can hear me, but they can't see what we're doing yet. They will soon. So they're looking at the frog and that's it, right? Yeah, well, they're looking at this. Oh. They're looking at the cards. Very nice. All right, let's see. Open this up. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, all right. I like what you did with her hair. That's really that's it's fetching. good. Instead of just um, monochromatic, you made it exciting. Yeah. So we got the uh, blisters for the action, the Heather Swain action figures there. Okay. That's good. Heather Swain. I just came in, yeah, huh? Yeah, for my approval. Um. <clears throat> Vespus Soldier Murder Hornet. Yes. Hmm. Packaging. Look at that. So that's got clear packaging in the front? No, this is the back of the card. Like this is this is the okay. you flip it over and it gives you the directions on how to apply the uh, little skull there. Hmm. Um, yeah, and all the stats. If you want to know about your murder horn, what he does. Uh, what's this here? Okay, so, yeah. Oh, what can I say? Very good. Great job. All right. Yeah, yeah, you got to go through like the, I mean, making an action figure is an extraordinarily it's a big process. It takes time. Sound getting choppy. Yes, yeah, sorry. Whenever I actually look at uh something else from my downloads, the audio goes out. Uh cards are looking killer. Says Matt Bar. Thank you so. Oh, so they weren't hearing our discussion. No, they were, but we sounded like garbage like it was oh. we're roboting. We're back, right? Yeah, you can't see it. I, I decided not to show you. It's not really that interesting. It's just, uh, you know, 
but the plastic part that covers, you know, the uh, what is cellophane or whatever, you don't want it to puncture easily, right? No, you definitely don't want it to puncture at all. Right. You know, like that one return you got. Yeah, the yeah, you're looking at the returns in the warehouse and like, yeah, mm-hmm. if, the, if it punctures, that's a problem. We could sell that, you know, as a, as a damaged product. Like if you're just going to open up your salamandroid toy, here you go. Have it at a discount. Some people want to do that, but most people are collecting these and they're going to want them to be in as nice a shape as possible. They keep them in the box, in the packaging, and they don't uh, open them? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. should buy two then so they can play with one and save another one somewhere, right? Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Okay. A lot of people have done that, you know. Yeah, fine now. Yeah, because we stopped looking at... Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, today we are um, closing out our black light poster campaign. Uh, this is what we're doing here: Cyberfrog black light posters. You just started that. How can you close it out already? Uh, because uh, the the entire point. Well, look, we're just closing out the funding period. It's going to stay in demand, which means people will still be able to back it um, forever. I mean, as long as I keep it up until I decide to take it down. Really, all I was trying to do is raise twenty thousand dollars. Uh, and the thing is, when this closes in 15 hours, uh, Indiegogo will dump all of this money straight into our account. Rather than waiting 60 days, just do this. This is enough money to make the posters. Okay. And that's all we want to do right now. And then everything else that comes in after that will be profit. We can keep that money. Uh, so we, we have enough money to make the product uh, and uh, just, cool. yeah, move on. I, it's just an idea. Like, I, you know, I saw somebody else crowdfund this way. And everybody else was kind of astonished by it. And I was too, because frankly, the campaign uh, that the person was was uh, doing a, a quick uh, funding period on was a huge campaign. It was, it's a Rambo book. Like if you had Rambo as an IP, you would want to fund it as much as possible. Like you'd want to leave it open for 60 days. But something like this, where we're just making posters and we only need this much money, makes sense to just do a three-day a four-day campaign okay get the money produce the posters produce the product keep it going keep selling the posters and then be able to fulfill turn around real quick and that's the plan here so thank you everyone who has backed this campaign appreciate you Uh, quite a few of you have and uh, how wonderful we have i'm telling you we have great people here we just picked up another backer Great people supporting what we do here at All Caps Comics. You know, I got three of your posters, and they're framed, and they're on a hallway mm-hmm. wall. And when people come over, take them over, we show your artwork to them. It's beautiful stuff. Do the Native Americans ever come over and look at my work? Um, the indigenous people? I haven't had any Native Americans in my place. Um, but they're very. I know of several you know that are very interested in what you do. The chairman of the uh, uh, Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa is a big fan of yours. Hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I got that one. Which one do you got? Uh, well, it's uh, maybe it's not that yeah, one. Yeah, I don't think it's that one. We didn't make posters of that yet. These are the posters we're trying to make. Maybe it's that one in back of you there. Oh, yeah, I like that one a lot. The team up fist bump piece. I uh, haven't made a, a blacklight poster. That probably won't, but... Um, yeah, this is just great. Thanks to everyone um, for backing this campaign and getting us way past our flexible goal. Uh, we are, uh, we're we're going to close out in 15 hours, but we'll keep it in demand uh, as we make the product. I don't know how long it's going to be in demand, but it'll be in demand for at least another month because I want to try to raise a little bit more money uh, to improve um, the, the Chromium cards. Uh, that's the thing. We got the money for the posters. That's fine. I want to make a better version of the Chromium card, so I'm going to keep the campaign open in demand for another month and try to raise a little bit more money for that. Foil packs. That's my dream. My wife's got a special flashlight that she shines on the posters. Oh, yeah. I mean, I a flashlight. I got my light over there. I, I'm showing it off right now. Like Are a, you including a flashlight with these? No. No, they no. They have to get their own, huh? Yeah, they have to get their own black light. I can't make black a black light. light. And I mean, this is, we got 238 people who've already purchased. Uh, many of them have purchased the black. I could never, we'd never be able to ship 238 black lights or make, or even make them. You know, I just don't think that we're in the business yeah. to do that. It's like a flashlight that she has. Mm. She turns the lights off, shines, it shows everybody who comes over. 
That's neat. Here are the action figures, of course. This is what we were just looking at, the uh, packaging for. Uh, everybody, thank you for uh, this. This is extraordinary. We've raised a lot of money to make these. We still need more. So um, if you haven't backed an action figure yet, please do. Rainbow the Brute is the uh, project of the uh, Project Du Jour. Um, this is uh, this is a the idea, Dad, is to take is to take these girly toy properties and to masculinize them. Mm -hmm. Women have ruined everything that boys. I don't know what it, what is the agenda behind that. Where I don't understand the mentality of it. It know? really is perverse. Like it's it perverted. It I mean, you've got me crazy. You've got these like GI Joe, Thundercats, Transformers. You've got these these things that are meant to sort of teach boys I, to be sort of aggressive. I, and I hate it when they masculine. take a character whose personality and character is already stabilized, and then to change it. Oh, it just infuriates me. It is the worst. It's the worst thing. And create your own characters and do what you want with them, but don't mess with our traditional characters and their righteousness. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got uh, also Second Chance, Cyberfrog 2, Wrecked Planet. Uh, beautiful campaign. We're waiting to uh, get these books in. Let's go. Amazing. Uh, getting closer to that. Picked up another backer today. Thank you. Um, Back Wrecked Planet. It's going to be shipping this month. We are going to ship this out this month. Thanks, everyone. Um, oh, I got an interesting message here. Uh, all right, I'm going to go uh, for a little while because I got to make a phone call. Um, but uh, I will be back in a little bit. We're going to be drawing all day. We're going to be doing cards all day. And then uh, we're going to go to see the lights, come back. I will do a closeout stream that's not going to be a draw stream, but a closeout stream for uh, for the Blacklight Poster campaign. Uh, thanks, everyone. You want me to keep your channel open and uh, run it for you while you're away? Uh, no, because you're going with. Oh, okay. Look at this. Lama Giganti goes, he won't be back. Yes, I will. Of course I will. It's the first of the month. <laughs> I got drawings to do. I'll do them on camera. Super chats are coming in. That's always an incentive to stay. Uh, but I will be back. I got to make an important phone call. Yeah. I, I thank you all. Uh, see you later, everyone. Love you. And when I say later, I mean like later, like just in a little bit. Love you. Yeah, we love you. Uh, all right. So I want to show a little, I got to find the right thing to close out with here. Um, oh, that's too long. Mm. Nah, heck with it. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.